Dude, after being away for two weeks, one thing has never been clearer to me. Streaming is not something that human beings are meant to do. It's very strange. It's been two weeks of normal conversations, non-combative interactions. Hi, hello, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Have a good day. That looks tasty, et cetera, et cetera. And then just immediate a, a flood of, of the most insane people. Thousands and thousands of the most insane takes all coming at you, begging like, like little hands out of the, the sands of the abyss, trying to drag you down to their level. It's madness. This is not something that human beings are meant to do. I've, I've, I, you, you realize, <clears throat> I'm a little sick, <clears throat> which is obvious. I was on uh, an airplane two days ago where I swear to you, everybody was... I, I've never experienced an airplane before where literally everybody was coughing. And there is a problem um, with... I don't know what it, It's middle-aged men. And I kind of include myself uh, in that bubble, but I was masked up on the flight. But like... What is it with 50-year-old men and being sick, obviously, not wearing a mask, and then just going like this? <sighs> like literally sitting next to 200 strangers and just horking. Like, do you have no self-awareness or, or embarrassment or shame at all? It's, it's madness. You can be sick, but try to hide it, man. Don't just sit there horking in your seat like some kind of freak show should at least endeavor not to get the people around you sick anyway. Long story short, this is not what human beings are meant to do. Mad Dog Nation, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, thank you. It became so clear to me, talking with other relatively normal people, now we were at a Disney hotel, so normal is a bit of a stretch. Hey Librarian, thank you as well, thank you. It is crazy, especially after like, I had six days with no internet access whatsoever. And I was like, oh my god, I feel amazing. And then I got internet access for two hours. I went on Twitter and the Twitter algorithm served me like 80 tweets about people that were like, they, they masculinized Princess Peach's face. It's so over for Nintendo. And I just, I, airplane mode. I went straight back to airplane mode and said, forget about that. Taking a couple of days off, you, that's just enough to... That's like a salve on a wound. If you really want to cure the disease that creates the weeping sores, you got to spend more time away. <laughs> it became so clear to me. I got down to the root cause. I was like, oh my God, this is... People are insane. That's the cause of everybody's problems. Also, librarian, you've, you're the craziest motherfucker out there. I saw your tweets. Listen, I, I appreciate the NL um, cultural tour you went on, and you went to a lot of great places. There were some places that, I mean, you may not know the geography of Vancouver. Librarian was fucking out there, north, south, east, west. Like, they, they went through the whole damn city. I mean, I'm not going to give you too many props for going to the Canucks restaurant, because that's literally like... It's the most on-the-way place you can go. It's in the U.S. terminal of the Vancouver airport. But I mean, for you to go to Il Grato del Formaggio, which is in East Vancouver, and then find yourself at Science World, and then find yourself at uh, Ramen Donbo on, on West 4th, I mean, like, that's like, you, you traverse the city east-west in a single day. I know I keep saying it, it's so weird. It is not normal to be like thinking of what to say and then have like 2,000 voices in your internal monologue. When we were on the cruise, we got seated uh, at a group table, which was terrifying at first because you're, you're in the same table for like eight days, right? And I was like, oh, there's been some mistake. Why are there six chairs? We're only three people. And they're like, oh, we're, we're going to put you with another family. Don't worry, you'll make friends. And I was like, this is how you get a one-star review on Yelp. Then it was another family with a 15-month-old son from England. And we had a great time. 
first couple of days we were just feeling each other out after that we you know got a little bit more like into the conversation figuring out where everybody's from what are you doing you know where have you been on vacation before in your life did you exchange emails well i let my wife exchange emails with them because i know that i'm not gonna coordinate with them i'm i'm a little flaky like that it's crazy how many normal people are out there man you wouldn't think that there are if you're online a lot but if you actually like go outside and are forced to talk to people <laughs> there's so many normal people out there was the 15 year old a viewer you mean the 15 month old i now see like this is why that's a relatively mild mistake but this is why like the human brain is not suited for this level of you know cross communicative bandwidth I'm capable of introducing my own errors into the cognitive process. I don't need, you know, the sum total of your compound interest of insanity added on top of it, mixed into the damn forever stew of my psychosis, okay? It is crazy. I was losing it in Apollo's chat today, so there was a, there's a new dull. Hey, Tungleberry. You hear what I'm saying? This is how you know human beings were not created by God or like another benevolent creator. I'm not saying I've got, I'm like casting the stocks while people throw tomatoes at me like it's my cosmic purpose. I'm just saying like, there, there's no plan for this shit. It's not like a, a deity is like, and then we'll invent live streaming. If there was a plan, that shit stopped in like, you know, before the invention of the steam engine. He was like, they give them, give them some sharp sticks, give them some, they'll make axes, they'll make spears, they'll make knives. He wasn't planning for this. Jesus did not take the wheel. By the way, can I tell you something? North Americans, we actually have to fix our culture. I'm not being ironic. We were on the beautiful islands of Hawaii, right? We went to um, Big Island. The island is a volcano. The entire landscape is formed by millions of years of lava flows, right? That then uh, hardened and became a completely unique geographic structure. And like once every 15 years, the volcano erupts a little bit and lava flows down from the peak and destroys a bunch of stuff. First question, like nine Americans put up their hand in the backseat of the bus. Tour guide said, yeah. They all at the same time said, is that covered by their insurance policy? We cannot let this be our legacy as a people, okay? It's, this is the cosmic wonders of nature. Like 3000 degree fire that's also liquid is being shot up from the earth. Your first question is like, hey, is that covered by your policy? You weren't meant to, to you were meant to look at it and go like, hur, hur, hur. and then like, like get on your hands and knees and go like, we, we either thank you or we cower in fear of you. We weren't meant to be like, you know, oh, is this considered a force majeure according to, I didn't, I, it's been a while since I read the terms of service from Prudential. Also, <laughs> I don't know, I, I need Chad's verdict on this, which is a scary thing to invite. I don't know if I'm the dweeb in this situation, but I tweeted that like, Hello Kitty, exclusive Pearl Harbor Memorial merchandise, because I felt like I was losing my mind. So when we were in Honolulu, we went to the Pearl Harbor historic sites. And I know that it was 70 years ago, 80, 80 something years ago. But I kind of assumed, maybe this is naive of me, I kind of assumed that the Pearl Harbor historic sites would be like a little bit I'm trying to think of the right word. They would have been like sober, somber, I guess is a better word. It's like somber memorials um, where you would be like, you know, a, a tragedy occurred here. And not only did a, did a tragedy occur here, but that tragedy in a immediate effect, but then also the ripples afterwards had an enormous impact on the world in ways that are still shaking out to this day. But what it really was is like 
as soon as you walk in and there's there's different parts right that are like this is about like the USS Arizona and this is about like the build up to the war and this is like what the world was like in the US with, before they entered the war but like really you kind of immediately they're like hey which of the 12 Pearl Harbor shirts would you like to buy would you like to buy the one that has the newspaper on the front that says like you know Japanese Navy attacks Pearl Harbor. Would you like to buy the one that has like two guns crossed over an American flag and says like December 7th, 1941? Would you like to buy the one that has like the USS Arizona like blown up in half that says these colors don't run? Would you like to buy the one that has like a nuke on it that says this country was not descended from fearful men? And I was looking around like, am I the only person that expected to come here and like, I'm not even American, but I expected to come here and, like, learn stuff, but also to pay respects. But people were shoveling every size of shirt you could imagine into, you know, Pearl Harbor tote bags and rushing the doors, man. It was, it was crazy. Eating, like, just eating the hot dogs outside of the gift shop. <laughs> Like, hey, honey, hey, hey, how many of the of, of the shirts uh, with the American flag and, like, the stars are crying and it says Pearl Harbor Memorial Sites on the top? How many of those do you think is too many? Eight? Eight? Is eight too many? But what's crazy is that, I mean, I guess in a way, you can almost look at it as a good thing. It's like, isn't that a sign that the world has done some healing at the very least? You know, you're like, well, it's so long ago that we can put it on a t-shirt. And then we'll buy that t-shirt and that'll give the person who put the t-shirt in their store enough money to eat lunch today. And <laughs> like, we've, we've turned it into like a, an economic thing. We've turned grief into merchandise. Also felt like I was like the only motherfucker there that was like, I want to learn some shit about Pearl Harbor. It felt like everybody else there was like, Check it out, I'm at the Pearl Harbor Museum. And I'm like, what's it? Why are you here? Couldn't you just go to like a brew pub or something like that? I just don't understand why. Like, you don't just have to go to the museum if you got no interest in it. Fake Pearl Harbor fans. Listen, that's not what I meant, but. It wasn't even, by the way, the fact that Hello Kitty is like a Japanese company. Like, some people were like, that's what makes it funny. I think that makes it funnier, but I also think it's kind of a sign that, you know, international relations have healed. It was more the fact that I was like, there's a fucking store at the Pearl Harbor Museum that has Hello Kitty doing the Rosie the Riveter, like, we can do it. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here as a society? A thousand people work at a factory making a Hello Kitty resin figure shaped like Rosie the Riveter that then gets packed into fucking boxes, placed on a, a tanker ship, like a freight ship, sailed across the fucking Pacific Ocean, lands on Hawaii, they unload that shit, they put it up, they put in like customized marketing and stuff like that. It's insanity. What are, what are we doing as a species? Hello, Corey, by the way. Hello. That's why I was asking Kate because she's been to the Hiroshima monument. And I was like, is it like that over there? And she was like, no, but it kind of sounds like Corey saying yes. <laughs> I guess it's just people though. It's not just North America. Like uh, when I went to the Korean War Museum, you know, it's an amazing museum in Seoul and they have like all of these like, I don't want to call them period pieces, period, appropriate machines of war outside, anti-aircraft guns, you know, gunships and fighter planes and bombers and stuff like that. And I was kind of like walking through it Ajashi style, you know? What's, what's Ajashi style? That's when you walk through anything, usually the produce section of a grocery store with your hands clasped behind your back like Morpheus, examining every single apple but then not buying any. Um, and I was walking through with a sense of, you know, like, wonder, but also fear that, like, look at what we as a, 
as a people have done. You know, we put our incredible talents to work building this machine designed exclusively to annihilate. And then there were like just people that were like, check it out, check it out, guys. I'm in the warplane. Wait, 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 we didn't get a good photo. I'm about to drop a bomb. So maybe I'm the dweeb, man. Maybe I'm the dweeb. I visited the DMZ by Panmujom last week. Same vibe. I never went to the DMZ, which I'm kind of regretful of. But I definitely had a lot of people that I worked with that went to the DMZ and like they take the photo like the peace sign next to the North Korean guard. You think that's the best job in North Korea or the worst job in North Korea? You think that guy's like... I got the easiest job in this bitch? Or do you think every person that comes up to take a photo is like, is just one fucking call of the void away from starting World War III? He's probably gritting his teeth. It's another person walks up and does a peace sign and like kicks their leg up behind and they do like a, can we get a selfie in her? You imperialist dogs. Were it not for the, Great spirit I have within myself. It would <laughs> I'll kick off an international incident incident right now. Super Mario Wonder, so true. Super Mario Wonder, apropos of nothing at all. You see what I say? Or what I'm saying when I say this is not a normal pursuit? What are we doing here? I know this is like the most narcissistic thing I've ever said. You guys are different. Do. Does the average person, and I'm envious of this, by the way, it's not meant to be insulting. Does the average person have no level of introspection or a, a muted level of introspection compared to what you see in, in well, see, because it's like this, do people not examine like themselves and then the world around them, and then themselves, and then the world around them, and, and like modify their, their feelings and behaviors as a result of that? I just couldn't get over, like if you're like 12 and you're at the Pearl Harbor Memorial, and you're like, check it out, boo, 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 I'm shooting at a, a Japanese Zero Kamikaze pilot, mom, boo. I'm like, okay, you're 12, like you're supposed to suck, no disrespect. When they were like, you know, people in their in their 40s and 50s and 60s there I'm like what the hell is what do you show some respect man I'm not even from the country and I'm showing some respect but come on you're like 55 years old and you're like at the Pearl Harbor Memorial and you're like eight bucks for a hot dog that's crazy it's not the point you idiot obviously you shouldn't be paying eight bucks for a hot dog at the Pearl Harbor historic sites but it's really like you're in a a, a site with unbelievable importance for like global history that we're still living in today and you're like the hot dogs are expensive shut up idiot go to the costco that's not what it's not here to sell hot dogs like not every venue on earth has to be like whoa 22 bucks for a t-shirt eight bucks for a hot dog what are they trying to do here just relax. I'm just gonna be honest. If you're watching this on Twitch, you're probably having a good time. If you're watching this on YouTube, have mercy. I have been living the way God intended people to live for two weeks. I have been blissfully unaware of the internet. Uh, I've spent very little time looking at a screen. I've, I've been having FaceTime with my family and also strangers and it was totally fine. It was totally great, honestly. I didn't have a single bad interaction. And now I'm looking at pixels in a 16 by nine grid. I'm gonna be playing roguelike poker while filtering the thoughts of 8,000 people through my own unique mental problems simultaneously and trying to weave that together in some kind of coherent stream of consciousness. It's gonna, I, I, it's gonna take some time. Let's put it that way. Like, do you know what my average conversation has been like for the last two weeks? Hey, how you doing, guys? 
Hey, how's your day been? What'd you guys get up to today? Oh, us? We went to the Dole Plantation. Meanwhile, I'm at the Dole Plantation. Everybody's eating pineapple ice cream. And I'm like, all I can think about is how many people got their ass beat in the Dole Plantation because they weren't working hard enough. That isn't touched upon at all. Instead, every single placard that you see is like, James Dole founded the Dole Corporation in 1868. What an amazing man. And I'm like, not even a single, we plant 28,000 pineapples by hand every single day. And there's not even a single one that's like, by the way, <laughs> the, the historical atrocities committed by this corporation are things that we don't stand by to this day. It's just like a pineapple takes up to 18 months to fully grow into something that can be turned into ice cream. And I'm like, what, what are we doing here, man? Not even a single monument or something. We're just out here going yum pineapples. And don't get me wrong, I ate the pineapple ice cream, but at the same time, <laughs> and it was good, but I don't really care that much about the pineapple except for how it tastes. I want to know more about the people playing on the pineapples and the way that it affected the economy of the area. And, you know, if we could go back in time, we would have done things a little bit differently, knowing what we know now and with the modern standards and respect for humanity that we have and stuff like that. But just yum, yum, yellow ice cream. Anyway. I'm playing Balatro. What? I cannot. No screen like this exists in nature. How is the human brain supposed to understand what I'm looking at here? New run. This is not a Balatro thing. This is it's just gonna take me a minute to remember that this is what I do, okay? Stop trying to ask me if I'm gonna play Suica game. I understand this is not my first day on the block, okay? Uh, this, this is a, a ligma if I've ever heard one in my entire life. And uh, I refuse, I refuse to believe that the streaming landscape has been captured by 2048 meets the little machine at the end of the grocery store checkout where you put in a quarter and you and you put your hand under it and then like you get a bunch of candy fruit but really like the only thing you want is the banana and then you're like really they gave me like eight of the oranges that break your molars and one banana one banana really this website has lost its way the sheep need a shepherd. Ludwig's programmer is making a one-to-one -one version of it. Okay, when they come out with, I know there is a web app version of Suica game already that Malf has been playing, but I watched it crash on him like three times and I would lose my mind in that situation. So when Automated comes out with the web app version that rips off Suica game and it doesn't crash, I'll play it. No, I'm not gonna play the Hololive fan version, okay? <laughs> There's an asynchronous multiplayer version of Backpack Hero and it's incredible. You gotta let me ease into this, man. I'm still... Just being here is crazy. You know how fucked up it is to go from, like, Hawaii, where it's 30 degrees Celsius and beautiful every single day? We came back, it's 9 degrees Celsius, raining. It's dark outside. It's 9.39 a.m. and it's dark. You know what's fucked up is that I missed it. After after time in Hawaii, I was like, oh, 30 degrees Celsius again, no. Oh. Driving my ass through the North Shore. Hey, check it out. Here's the most beautiful beach in the world. It has 40 foot waves and world championship uh, surf events every year. And I'm like, yeah, but there's no mountains beyond the beach. In Vancouver, if you go to Kitts Beach, you get, uh, there's, you can see North Vancouver, you can see the silhouettes of the, of the cargo ships, and then you can see the mountain, and the mountains have snow peaks, I'm like, why, it ain't all that, that's all like, yeah, is it the most beautiful, uh, scenery I've ever seen in my entire life, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can I make a little joke about Hawaii without everybody losing their minds? This one's just for the people from Oahu, okay? Hawaii is very interesting, because they have this... Aloha culture, which is a little bit more like, be nice, stay laid back, hang loose, don't take everything so seriously. So they've got that culture, but it's also the United States of America, which means that on Oahu, every single store you go into has a sign that says like, um, Aloha, my nice Ohana. Just letting you know, trespassers will be shot on sight. Mahalo. 
it, it, I was kind of losing my mind a little bit. It was such a mix of like, you know, like let everybody be what everybody wants to be. And then like the end of it was like, we will kill you if you steal something from our store. And I was like, oh, you know what? What can you say? Also, I'm just throwing this out here. Apparently, nobody in Honolulu has ever used their signal light. Is that what? I kind of thought Aloha was like, when you, in Canada, if you bump into somebody by accident and you say sorry, and then they say sorry, and you say sorry, that was my bad, and they say sorry. Apparently, the second half of Aloha culture is, you know, I'm never gonna let you know where I'm going. Did you go to any other islands? I think so, but I kind of got lost. Like, it was a long time. We were on Big Island. We were on Oahu. We were on, we went to a place called Na Willy Willy. I did stay at the White Lotus with my aunt, Jennifer Coolidge. What am I doing? I'm on the second turn, man. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> The Bear Review, my ass did not watch it, but I did download it all to watch, which is the first step, but I just didn't watch it. Honestly, you would think like being away for so long, I would I have a lot of time. It was actually like I would put my daughter to bed at like 9 p.m. and then my ass is like, oh, I'm sleepy. I'll just fall asleep. Didn't watch it on the plane. No, I watch Goodfellas on the plane because I think I'm becoming a uh, Scorsese pill. I think that one tweet that went uh, viral where the dude was talking about uh, Goodfellas and he's like, nah, bro, teenagers totally want to watch Goodfellas where all their favorite characters get a bad ending and critics like sniff their own farts. And I was like, wait a minute, I've been like half supporting Scorsese for this Marvel movies are mid take and half supporting Marvel movies because it gives me like uh, my, my arm hair stands up when Captain America picks up Thor's weapon because like, whoa, that's not supposed to happen. But um, I was like, this motherfucker is going to pull me entirely to the Scorsese side because I remember Goodfellas. Goodfellas is not, you know, like high life where you're watching this movie and you're like, Ooh, like the whole movie is da dunk da da dunk da dunk Dun, dun. You know, people are getting their heads blown off every two seconds. Everybody, they're cracking jokes all the time. Joe Pesci is the best performance Joe Pesci's ever had in his entire life. The movie's two and a half hours long. It feels like it's 15 minutes long. It's unbelievable. And the dude is out here saying, uh, it's a movie critics trick themselves into liking because they're high on their own farts. What the fuck are you talking about? Is more excited. Listen, is it as good as Captain America: The Winter Soldier? I don't know. I don't watch too many uh, Criterion Collection films. It's a pretty good movie, man. Yes, thank you. This the librarian with a live source. It means normal people like going to the movies for fun, not to watch 200 minutes of people being miserable and getting a bad ending while they huff their own farts out of a wine glass because they think they're more of an intellectual than other kids. Just realize you're weird, bro. Me when Ray Liotta gets a bad ending in Goodfellas. No! Ray Liotta, he was on his path for the good ending. Unfortunately, he cheated on his wife 300 times and killed all those people. He missed the, he missed the dialogue prompt to get the good ending. Did you say what the new doll was? You're right, I got sidetracked. I was losing my mind. This is another, um, this is another um, entry in the index of like, Twitch has made me lose my mind. Apollo was doing a new uh, doll called Bandle, where they take like a, a song and strip the tracks out and then do them in MIDI so that you start and you hear like the drum and bass track and it goes, you hear like dun, 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 and you're like, I don't know that song. And then they bring in like the guitar track and you hear like dun, ga, ga, dun, ga, ga, dun, ga, dun, ga, dun, ga, ga, dun, ga, dun, ga, dun, um, and today's, and then it, it, they get down to the voice, and it's basically KK Slider in here. And it was hung up by Madonna. First off. I was losing my fucking mind. I'm not even a huge Madonna fan. His whole chat of people born in the year 2006 
We're like, Madonna fucking sucks. Yeah, bitch, now. But for like 20 years, she was pumping out bangers across like three different eras. She's got that early era in the 80s, you know, like a virgin, like a prayer, holiday, um, crazy for you, La Isla Bonita, etc., etc. And then in the 90s, people were like, Madonna's washed. And then she was like, check it out, motherfucker, it's Ray of Light. We just put out Ray of Light, a song that for some reason is like entirely forgotten in the modern era, even though it goes hard as fuck. And then people were like, Madonna's, yeah, Ray of Light was crazy, but Madonna's washed as fuck. Then in 2005, she says, check it out, I'm sampling ABBA. And Hung Up might be her best song. Which I know is a bit of a hot take, but anyway. Th so this take number one, people were like, Madonna has no good songs. Take number two, Apollo said, I've never heard a Madonna song. And the fucked up part is I believe him, which doesn't make any sense, but I don't think he'd have any reason to lie about that. Third, people were like, it doesn't count. It's only good because it's an ABBA sample. And I didn't realize that it's a crime to have a good sample. Apparently you have to have a shit sample and make the song good, otherwise it doesn't count as good music. Like people are more anti-Madonna than they are anti-U2, which is driving me crazy. Put some respect on, on at least Madonna's good songs, man. You don't have to be like Madonna's a, a American hero, but you should respect, you know, realness when you see it. Don't even get me started, man. We're revolutionizing culture. We have to normalize the, the morning diet soda, okay? I would even normalize, and it pains me to do this, I would normalize a full sugar soda in the morning. There is literally no difference between this and an energy drink, except that this won't blow up your heart as fast, okay? I don't mind if you say it's not acceptable to drink a soda in the morning, but if you say it's not acceptable to drink a soda and you drink a monster energy drink, you're a hypocrite. It's like, you're, you're basically being the kind of motherfucker who's like, oh, you can't have, like, cereal for dinner. You know, it's all just matter. If you drink coffee with anything added to it, you don't have the moral high ground to say that, like, at least a diet soda is not appropriate with your breakfast, okay? If you drink a black coffee exclusively, I'll give you that, okay? You, could, you, you have a, a slight ability to be a snob. But if you drink coffee and you put anything in it, you are drinking this, basically. A splash of oat milk, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a soda now. It's a mixed drink, okay? But I know there's a lot of fuckers out there who are like, you can't have a soda for breakfast. Meanwhile, they got a 120 ounce Stanley sipper walking around all day with their eyes glazed over. 30% coffee, 70% half and half. 12 sugars in there and then they're looking at me having a coke zero with like my morning tomatoes asparagus rice and spinach and they're like soda for breakfast you hate your body we got it we got a problem man we got to take this shit back down to its first principles okay this tweet was inspired by me being at a buffet every day for 10 days in a row on the last day finally i saw someone else take a tomato from the tomato warmer and I said my people we're so back also can I tell you something that's crazy I I in my heart of hearts it irritated my wife like crazy but I planned to work out every single day that I was gone I'm not worried that I'm gonna lose the habit the Peloton's too much of my identity right now anyway the Peloton supercut came out um, the egg carton has been keeping the rides going there's even a Peloton sub community on the discord now but I was like, I'd like to work out every day on the, on the vacation, right? So the first day, I, I packed shoes, I packed six pairs of shorts, workout shirts, I packed the sweatbands and stuff like that. Um, long story short, 5.30 a.m. first day, put on my gym clothes, right? Go up into the, uh, the gym, start walking on the treadmill. They don't have... Uh, exercise bikes that I like. They don't have exercise bikes you clip in, so I said, I'll just go for a jog, right? Ship was swaying a little bit. Start walking, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I get, it gets to be time to take a little jog, right? So I start jogging, and I'm kind of like swaying a little bit. And uh, 
I lost control of my brain. Without any executive function, I smashed the button that was basically like, I'm having a heart attack. Uh, and I got off the treadmill and I just sat down in a chair outside of the gym, seasick as fuck, like an insane person at uh, 6.15 in the morning. I sat there for two hours with just being so seasick, I was Googling fucked up shit like, do fish get nauseous underwater? And then I said, you know what? The nausea left and I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then I stood up to go back to my room and I walked straight to the bathroom and I didn't even get on my knees. I just bent over at my waist and went <laughs> and yacked uh, like an entire stomach's contents of bolus into the toilet flushed it down the toilet and then i was like i'm fine but i did not work out <laughs> you worked out but it didn't work so true i did the work it didn't work as lizzo said probably my favorite artist nothing happened with her while i was gone right <laughs> that happened like four months before i left anyway I'm gonna say flushes get better. Let's go with Jupiter. Boys go to Jupiter to get more stupider. You know what's crazy is also being uh, away for like two weeks. I gotta remember that the inside jokes I've become used to are not inside jokes with you. They're like inside jokes with my family. Like if I say, you owe me three dollars, you're not gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about. That shit is already in the automatic routine of my brain that's that's an inside joke that me and my wife have with our daughter three dollars i can't don't lie to me because i'm the thing i've been dealing with honest communication not this irony steeped level of insanity so my ass is primed to believe you right now when you say insane shit like that did you learn to surf no honestly i say this with respect for the people who live in hawaii i really don't get surfing it looks fun, but like there are people there that at least for a while have dedicated their lives to to surfing. That seems crazy to me. You go out at like, you know, six in the morning, catch a cut, like a, a few waves. What do you do for the rest of the day? Obviously, they're having great. They all look amazing, by the way. It's like going to, the, to Hawaii was like what I imagine the world looked like in... 1984 you ever watch like a, a a documentary from the 1980s and it's all like young americans with their shirts off they're eating like lard and drinking full sugar coca-cola and they all have eight packs and you're like what the fuck what have they done to us what's what's going on here that's what hawaii is still like it's all like 64 year old men whose skin looks like beef jerky but they got like they got the, you know what I'm talking about, the penis lines, the gutters. So maybe, maybe mankind was meant to surf. But I will say, isn't it like, <laughs> maybe I'm ignorant. Isn't surfing like a lot of work for like a two second rush? Maybe it's, that's why you're hunting that like perfect wave. Maybe there's something beautiful about that. But it definitely, when, what I saw, and maybe I wasn't at like the, the beaches where it was, you know, heavy surf, but it was a lot of like, people would like paddle out and then like a, a two foot wave would come and then they would stand up and then like a second later the wave would be gone and they'd get back on the board and I'm like, I guess I just don't get it. Any good buffet freaks this trip? Who's <laughs> a, buff, a buffet freak? I mean, I don't want to be too judgmental. I save that stuff for when the cameras are off. Right, Kate? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think like... My philosophy on the buffet, okay, we're on the cruise for 10 days. You can't go full like Caligula for 10 days. You'll do serious damage to your body. It's not like, oh, you can't have any fun. It's just like, you're gonna feel like total shit. Like you're not gonna be able to enjoy your vacation as much as you normally could if you're living like Orson Welles, right? So for breakfast every morning, you can ask my wife, 
There was not a day where I was like, yum, chocolate chip pancakes. For breakfast every day, I tried to make sure that I set myself up for success. A little egg fried rice, a little sauteed spinach, two halved tomatoes, you know? And then you'd throw some stuff on there, throw a hash brown on there, you know, throw a breakfast sausage, a couple of slices of bacon or something like that, four Coke Zeros. And then, you know, it's nine in the morning and you're like, I've set myself up. Now I can, I can, because I was having dessert every night, which is not typical for me. So, but I was like, I set myself up for success. But you do see a lot of people that were like, you know, day one of the cruise, they're like, I'm so excited for my vacation. And like day four, they look like they got hit by a truck. And then you're like, this because you're eating just crab legs and chicken strips for, for lunch every day. It's too, you got to add like a little, just some vegetable content on top of everything else. Like, it's just crazy to me. You know, the chicken strips are there for kids, right? I don't want to offend anybody by saying they're not. Here's the thing. I love a good chicken tender, but the chicken tenders on the cruise are not good. Take it from somebody that ate his kids' chicken tenders after she decided that I'm not going to eat tonight, you know? I eat them, you know, they're still like at the end of the day, they're okay. But these are not like, you know, premium chicken tenders. This is mostly just like, it's kind of like fried breadcrumbs stuffed with mattress foam. The people were going apeshit for the chicken tenders. And also, we as a society have to bring back the stocks. And I'm not talking about GME, okay? We need public shaming, and public shaming, we don't use it for real crimes. They go to prison. We bring it back for people that fill up their cup at the fountain drink machine and then drink it at the fountain drink machine when there's a line behind them, because that's crazy. You'd even see some motherfuckers, to, there's like two levels to this, right? The first one is they fill up their cup 100% of the way, drink 20% and then fill it up again. Like, no, 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 I'm not waiting for 120% of one Coca-Cola, okay? But that at least I can understand is just you have no awareness of other people being around you because you're from a town with 35 people in it, no problem. The second level, and this is true joker nonsense, is that people will go fill up their cup at the fountain, drink half of it, and then not fill it up. And I'm like, you're just blocking the way just to be a motherfucker. There's, not a, you're, there's no benefit to it for you whatsoever. You're just standing in the fucking way. Anyway, sorry. Well, it's 10.09. <laughs> I've, I've played six hands of Balatro. Also, I don't know if this makes me European or Canadian. Americans, if you love ice so much, why don't you marry it? People go fucking apeshit for ice. I didn't realize, like, how... <laughs> Does anyone else ever notice this when they go to the United States? I feel like it's crazy to me that people are out there putting ice in like every single drink that they get. Sometimes it's nice, but at the same time, I'm like, it adds such a drag to your life. You know, like every, every time you, you've got to get drinks for like you, your wife, your seven kids. And then you got to remember that like half of the people want ice in their orange juice and half of the people want Fucking, can you make a Shirley Temple out of like eight different kinds of soda at the fountain? It's it's crazy. If if my wife said, can I get you a drink? And I said, Coke Zero, she'd say, I already know. But if she said, you want ice or no ice? I would be like, are you crazy? You're, you're, you're the love of my life. I'm not gonna make you go to the fucking ice machine and wait for three minutes just so my drink is a little cold. Just bring me back the cool. It doesn't molecularly change the, f the composition of the beverage. Just go treat yourself. Go get me some Coke Zero. Hurry back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You know, don't dilly-daddle, but at the same time, treat yourself. Also, I know that we should be playing because we have momentum. I'm still not convinced that decaf isn't a psyop. I tweeted like, is decaf a psyop? I've never seen anyone drinking it. I did have a lot of people reply, like, I have a heart condition. My doctor told me not to drink caffeine anymore. And I'm like, you would think that's like a gotcha, like you have a medical problem and now I'm the asshole. No, just like, are you really fucking addicted to the taste of drip coffee? You're fucked, brother. Like there are situations when, when someone's getting shitty coffee out of like a big carafe at a quick service restaurant. I'm like, you and me both, brother, 
my head is gonna feel like I'm in outer space if I don't get it inside of my body in like 15 minutes. But if you're like, oh no, no, this is decaf. My doctor told me like I can't have caffeine anymore. And I'm like, well, drink something good, moron. Do you have like some juice or something like that? You don't, you've, you've cast off the yolk. You've already gotten through the, the withdrawal process and you've broken the chains of caffeine. Why don't you just have like a, why don't you just have a, co a Coke Zero with no caffeine? But there were people that were like, I like the taste of coffee, but I can't have so much caffeine at night. I was like, I'm, maybe you're getting some amazing decaf. I've had good coffee in my life, but it's like, if someone said, hey, here's the thing, we're gonna like break your caffeine addiction, but the catch is you're never gonna be able to taste coffee ever again. I'd be like, bang, sign me up, brother. There's no downside. It's like good thing, but also good thing would happen. Get a lot of minus two. Listen, I'm not trying to convince, I'm not trying to say something Apollo-esque that's like coffee doesn't taste good. I'm simply saying it doesn't taste good enough to miss it. <laughs> it do, if it didn't have caffeine in it, I wouldn't be drinking it. If I went to the grocery store and they had Coke Zero, but only caffeineless Coke Zero, I would be like, yeah, it's fucking no problem. Load, load up the trunk. You know, it's no problem. I don't drink the Coke Zero for the caffeine. I drink the Coke Zero because it tastes like the greatest flavor invention that mankind has ever made. If they were like, you can't have 7-Eleven coffee anymore, I wouldn't, I would just say, okay, fucking give me some Coke Zero. It's, can I, I had another thought that occurred to me while I was on the, on vacation, okay? Look at what mankind has done in our existence on the earth. We went from kong, kong, you know, smashing two rocks together just to see a spark. We put people on the moon. Why are we still eating food that tastes like food existed a million years ago? You know, I get that, the, oh, the bananas are sweeter now because of artificial selection, and the strawberries are sweeter, and the beef is bigger because we use antibiotics and hormones and stuff like that. But shouldn't there be some motherfuckers in a lab with molecular chemistry cooking up flavors that we can't possibly conceive of? Why are we still, we got these eggheads in lab coats that are like, boom, check it out. It's an extract that tastes just like a raspberry. Bro, are you kidding me? Get it, do some alchemy in the lab. Come up with a new flavor. Don't come up with some shit that's like, check it out, it's an ester that tastes just like bananas. Fucking get creative. You got all the, do, 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 do. you got the chiral forms and the molecular models and shit like that. Cook up something interesting, man. I don't want, oh, artificial apple. Give me some jazz. Give me, give me some shit where like when I eat it, I go, what the fuck is that? It tastes amazing. And they're like, we don't know. We just made it. We, we, we looked at how the molecules trigger the senses on your tongue and your taste buds and stuff like that. And we created a brand new flavor that God himself could not have conceived of. We're the Oppenheimers of molecular gastronomy. Instead of feeling like the shit is always like, we made the chicken saltier. Come on, man, get creative. Listen, sign up for the next demo. What is it? Local Thunk, are you here? What is this star citizen honey dickin' we got going on here? You play the demo in Steam Summerfest. Hey, get ready, the full game comes out in the fall. Boom, here we got two more for you. Here's another demo. I'm playing this demo, Steam fucking fall games done quick. Small game festival number 25 this year happening concurrently with the 98th Steam sale that's ever. And hey, here's another, here's another demo for you. Hey, when you finish this demo, why don't you enjoy the demo? I've been cooked. It's a good demo, I'm just saying. It is, it's a little bit of honey dicking. Nothing happened to James Franco while I was gone, right? Like he's still cool to reference James Franco. <laughs> Nothing happened to Alexander the Great when I was gone, right? Like, he's, we still look back in history as a, he's like a hero instead of like a, a despot. Hey, we're all still cool with uh, Judas Iscariot, right? Like, he hasn't done any... When I was gone, he didn't do anything crazy, like betray the one son of Christ or whatever. For three coins. I don't know anything about the Bible, by the way. 
Bro, how funny is it by... So, listen. <laughs> this might be... <laughs> offensive. Which is great. But... We were, um... In Hawaii, right? We were at a resort. I thought there's no fucking way. Opened up the drawer next to my bedside. Gideon's Bible. I said, really? Forgetting something, aren't we? I went one drawer down, Book of Mormon. I was like, there we are. No disrespect, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Look out the fucking window. Beautiful white and black sand beaches, the ocean, perfect temperature. One beautiful cloud in the sky as if it was painted there by Bob Ross. Water slides, 500 man-made swimming pools. If you think my ass is cooped up in my, that's the, the most misapplied Book of Mormon that has ever been released into society. You are not going to get any converts at the Olani Disney Hotel Resort and Spa in Koalina, Hawaii, okay? You gotta go to find like a, a Motel 6 that's like on eight hours midpoint of a 16 hour drive between like two mid-sized American cities. And then at that point, you might find it, you live driving for 10 days, bleary ass eyes, all hooped up on decaf. You're like, fuck it, I need to find God. Just give me a book. Somebody put a book in my hands. My ass is not putting on sunscreen, eating, uh, you know, smoked salmon al fresca, and then like, hmm, I'm looking for something to do. You walk two steps, people are like, you wanna go kite surfing today? You wanna, you wanna find God in the ocean? You wanna snorkel with some yellow tang? You're like, no, 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 no. No, sorry, I can't go to a luau tonight. I'm finding God. Just relax, okay? You gotta put more of that shit in Indiana, okay? Take all of it. Don't start in Hawaii. Do you take all the hangers and soap out of the hotels when you leave? Are you crazy? We don't take the hangers. Of course we take the soap. You pay for the soap. I'm not taking the hangers, though. What am I gonna do with that? You might as well take the soap. Unless it's in one of those, like, you know, Walgreens Pharmacy anti-theft cases where you can just hit the button. They're, like, gonna throw out the soap after you leave, obviously. What about taking towels? I think that's theft. You do not take the iron. Come on. Did you take the ironing board? No, you you don't. Where, where, where would you even put that? It doesn't even make sense. How many ironing boards you got in your house? What about the TV? You wouldn't want the average hotel TV. It's the only CRTs that are like still in use to this day. This is a, you either have a 40 inch TV that's like as deep as it is wide, and you, it's fucking like you can't even turn it to face the bed. You gotta like sit up and watch TV like this, or they're like, check it out, we bought flat screens in 2007. So there's like a nine inch flat screen mounted in the corner of the ceiling on the other side of the room, and you're like, you gotta bring your own, man. There's no other way. For whatever reason, their cable package doesn't come with a guide. So true. Me at the sports bar on the Disney cruise ship, watching the American tables try to argue with the bartender to turn on NBC for because the football game they want to see is on NBC. The bartender has to keep politely explaining that because this is owned by Disney, they can only play either ESPN, ESPN2, or... Uh, ABC. He's like, bro, I'll give you my login. I'll give you my Peacock login, please. Can you just put on this game? Uh, yeah, we don't we don't get that channel. I'm sorry. Okay, okay here's the thing. Hello, Jay. By the way, hello. I told Jay I was gonna ride the Peloton this morning. I said, be there. I'll be there for sure at 6:30. Me uh, looking at my phone when I woke up, limmy faced, 7:47 a.m. already. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> It happens. Me last night, I will be there no matter what. Me this morning, the lights were brighter than I expected. I missed NL stream. Thank you, Kate, thank you. 
I will say a couple of things, Kate. First off, it feels amazing to, and I love my kid. I love our kid. It does feel amazing not to be in the presence of a three-year-old right now. Like, I don't have to moderate myself. I don't have to talk in this voice all the time. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi. You know, like, I was, I wouldn't say I was getting on the verge of losing it, but I was getting quite frustrated. She's potty trained now, but she has a bad habit of like, we have to know when she has to go pee or poop because she starts like dancing. And then we go, do you have to go potty? And she goes, no. And I go, let's go potty. And she goes, no. And I go, you look like you have to go potty. And she says, I don't have to go. Then I take her to the bathroom and I sit her on the potty and she's like, she pees a full bladder like instantly. This is so annoying, bro. I'm like, for it's one thing that I have to take you to the bathroom. It's another that I got to like convince you first that you have to go. But I swear to you, this is true. We were swimming our last day in the swimming pool, somewhere over the rainbow playing on ukulele as it does at every Hawaiian hotel uh, every eight minutes. It's just that, then Elvis, then Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I know they have other songs. I wish they would play them, but for some reason, it's, everybody came there just for the Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And then we're, we're in the pool. She's in a wetsuit, right? F full body, basically. Uh, which is very inconvenient at the best of times for uh, bathroom breaks. Because the shit is like wet and it sticks to her skin and I gotta unzip it and then pop all the sleeves out and roll it all the way down. We're always late to go to the bathroom because she's like, I don't have to go. Anyway, long story short, we've been swimming for a couple hours and then she's like, I want to see mommy. And I'm like, okay, let's get out of the pool. So we get out of the pool and I say, let's go see mommy. But before we go see mommy, let's go to the bathroom. And she said, no, I want to see mommy. I said, we're going to the bathroom first, okay? So I took her into the bathroom and I just, she was going like, hurry, hurry. And I'm like, oh no. So we got into the stall and I pulled her wetsuit off and she had pooped after the swimming pool. I want to be clear. She had pooped in her wetsuit. Like she was, I could see the soft serve ice cream like coming out into the wetsuit as I was pulling it off. And I was like, oh fuck, what am I going to do? Okay, so he, what do we do? I'm not ashamed to admit this, okay? I swear to you with God as my witness. And other parents will back me up here. You're in the room, we got a toilet, you got toilet paper, it's like an escape room, right? You got toilet, toilet paper, and that's fucking it. So what did I do? As it came out, I grabbed the poop. And then I, like, I, the poop that had already made it onto the wetsuit, that's a problem we're gonna do, we're gonna deal with later, okay? But first, I, held my hand out like sir can I have some more and when she finished pooping I did one of those and dumped it in the toilet that wasn't even the worst part of it which is crazy yes I ate uh, not ate sorry <laughs> I grabbed the poop everyone was saying he ate it then I dumped it you gotta do something okay it's not gonna get any better you know you gotta sack the body even this you gotta block some damn shots John Tortorella and then I put her on the potty and I was like do you have to do you have to go anymore and she's like no and then I was like, why did you tell me you didn't have to go? Why did you say I wanted to see mommy? Why didn't you tell me you have to go poop? And she said, I didn't want to stop swimming. And I was like, well, now you got a much bigger problem. It's hard to explain this to a three-year-old, but now we got a much bigger problem than if you had just told me five minutes earlier, we could have gone swimming. Now I got to spend fucking 20 minutes in the stall trying to clean shit off of a wetsuit with just the one ply toilet paper, which I still don't understand, even at like luxurious hotels. They only give you one ply toilet paper. We're well, not paying enough to get two ply toilet paper at these places. So now I'm, I'm scraping the poop out of the wetsuit, dunking it in the toilet. Scraping the poop out of the wetsuit, dunking it in the toilet. And I mean, we were there for like the the shit is like leaving toilet paper crumbs because it's only one ply and it's got like a big brown stain on it. And that's basically the end of the story. I took her, I, I cleaned it off for like literally 20 minutes as long as I could made like a little toilet paper buffer to put in as like a diaper. 
zipped her back up and she was like, I don't want to put on my poopy wetsuit. And I was like, well, I didn't shit in it, lady. So, you know, let's think of that next time before we get down to this. Did you not see me freehand the poop and you're going to tell me you don't want to wear your dirty wetsuit when you're the one who pooped in it? Like, what are you? I'm doing my best here. And I took her back to Kate and I was like, you got to change her like immediately because I'm going to abandon my child like some fucked up like animal on the savannah. I'm just going to turn around and walk away. Anyway, she was okay. I was mad for like a little bit, but now I'm laughing about it. Anyway, here we go. I do, the only story that my parents have ever told me about potty training was that there was like one day when I was like three, I woke up and was like, I have to go to the bathroom. And then I walked into the bathroom. It was like in the middle of the night. I walked into the bathroom and started peeing like half asleep. And then my dad was like, what are you doing? And then I uh, looked, like I opened my eyes or I don't know, the reality came rushing back to me. And I realized that I was peeing in the dirty laundry hamper instead of the toilet. Like for some reason I was just in my sleep addled brain. I was like, this is where the toilet is, right? And just pissed all over the dirty clothes. <laughs> Jack King Ace. Yeah, I wish. Streamer named Ace, <laughs> I guess. What's well, not a straight? Call me Henry the Eighth, the way I forgot about my queen. You missed two flushes? Me talking to my daughter after she poops in her wetsuit? Here, two, three, four, five. Play hand. That's not a straight. <laughs> <laughs> Start me up. Okay, I'm ready. I didn't like that seed. Did you get a Hawaiian shirt? You know I got a Hawaiian shirt, brother. You know I went to Chief's Luau. I got recognized at Chief's Luau. I'd like to apologize to the person who recognized me. I, I was perfectly polite, but I was a little bit out of it. They made the Mai Tais too motherfucking strong, dude. Meanwhile, they, I've been having people drop uh, hula dancers in my face for like three hours straight. A dude lit a torch on fire and swallowed it, burned the shit out of his tongue, grabbed the fire with his hand, and, went a, and then like put the fire on the other end of the torch and then spun it in the air. Like my brain was so fucked up, man. It was great though. If you're ever in... Uh, if you're ever on Oahu, go ahead to Chief's Luau. It was a great time. What did you do to the guy who recognized you? I mean, it was fine. I just, like, wasn't at my best. He said, like, hey, we're from Edmonton. And I was kind of like, I had to do the math. And I was like, oh, he recognizes me. This isn't just, like, the world's most proud Edmontonian. <laughs> I was like, this this guy's just, maybe he didn't recognize me. Maybe he was just like, uh, he just loves telling people about Edmonton. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then he said, this is my friend. He knows you too. And I said, oh, nice to meet you. And we shook hands. I was starting to like get up to speed with the interaction. And then he said, uh, it was, uh, I just said one thing to say, do more content with Ludwig. And then I was like, oh, I get it now. I like, he's a busy guy, but I'll do my best. And then I said, y'all stay safe now. Y'all take care. But I was like, I could have been a little bit more on my game. But I kind of, it was like a, the interaction was a little stealth to begin with. I didn't know, because sometimes, like we were, when we were at the Dole Plantation, uh, a man about my age who was very, he seemed a little nervous, came up to me. And he said, hi, excuse me? And I was like, switched into Northern Lion mode, right? And then he was like, uh, do you guys need a ticket for the hedge maze? We have an extra. And I, I had to switch back in the normal guy, non-confrontational mode where I was like, oh, thank you so much, but we're not going to be here long enough. You should try to give it to somebody else. And he said, oh, okay. I will say, though, I got recognized by two teenagers on the cruise. Shout out to you if you're out there. Now, if you've never been on one of these cruises, there's like lounges, right, that are age limited. 
So there's a lounge, there's actually, there's a lounge for like zero to two year olds, basically, which is called a daycare. And then there's like two areas for kids that are like uh, three to 10. And then there's one for kids that are like 10 to 14. And then there's one for kids that are like 15 to 17 or whatever. Anyway, so I was in the like, age appropriate lounge for my child all the time making sure that she went down the slide a okay but on the last day they did an open house in the other lounges and i was like okay honey let's go check out these other lounges here and uh i i went up to the teen lounge and the teenagers who recognized me were there and we played Guitar Hero together on the Guitar Hero arcade cabinet and i was like this is a one of one nl interaction that's and I'm not saying this to be a narcissist. I was like I had a great time, but I was also like that's a that's a minted mythic rare right there. Did you lose? Yeah. But I thought I did a pretty good job as a 34-year-old man. I think that at the very least they were like this guy was better than I expected. <laughs> Probably. And also, it was so funny, and it, it, I mean this in a non-offensive way, because I was the same way when I was a teenager through till I was like, you know, 28 probably. But everywhere else on the cruise, when somebody sees your cute toddler, they're like, Good morning, princess. Wow, you're so cute. Wow, you're so adorable. How's your day been so far? Wow, she's so precious. Oh, you guys, she's so smart. They know how to interact with, uh, with young kids, right? It's like high energy trying to entertain them when i took my three-year-old into the teenager lounge it was like nobody knew what the fuck was going on i fed nobody talked to her at all people would like look at her and then kind of like look to the side it was like bizarro world man i was i was laughing my ass off when i left it's like teenagers there i get it you're like You've been in this bunker for like 10 days and you're like, we're adults, we're adults. It's pretty cool. There's like a soda fountain in here. There's a Guitar Hero cabinet. You could play Madden. This is like what being an adult is like. And then I brought in someone where I was like, you guys are peers. And they're like, what? No, dude, no. That's Cap. That's Cap, bro. And I'm like, no, to me, you're basically, you're basically the, sh the same age, just so you know. I'm sorry to have broken that facade, okay? I'm also sorry to have put down a new high score in She Bangs the Drums by the Stone Roses, but you know what? You might get a chance to beat that at some point. My Uber Eats driver just said, sorry I'm late, I got stuck in a protest. Me supporting the right to peaceful assembly. Uh, soy Jack face. But happy. Me when the right to peaceful assembly means my chicken tenders arrive 30 minutes later than I expected. Soy Jack weeping. You can auto count cards. Dustin Hoffman be like, I mean, Tom Cruise be like, what if they made Rain Man, but Johnny Knoxville played the Dustin Hoffman part and Steve-O played the Tom Cruise part? Yeah, check out Knox, bro. He's fucking cracked at Blackjack. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the Johnny Knoxville part. Bro, he's fucking cracked. He fucking kills at the Blackjack tables, bro. Oh, man, that would go crazy. That would be a good movie, I think. When blind is selected, destroy the Joker to the right and permanently add its sell value to this malt. Yes. I'm going to... I'm going to try. So you're going to give me plus four malt flat. <laughs> this is a germa bit, and I'm not saying it's like spiritually similar to a germa bit. This is a literal germa bit. The human brain was not meant for this. We were supposed to be in the forest hidden trees with rocks and stuff like that and like doing story time around the fire and like you know eating grass and nuts and stuff like that what did we when blind is selected destroy joker to the right and permanently added cell value to this malt you know how many layers of civilization have built up to this 
the invention of of language, uh, getting to the point, the invention of games. That the, it, I don't know, I just kind of lost it. But at the same point, I think we should just maybe become cavemen again. I think at least when you're a caveman, you kind of know where you stand, right? That's the hard part about modernity, is you're like, am I doing the right thing? I think if you're a caveman, at least there's tranquility in your solidity of purpose. You're like, go out, get nuts, come back, eat nuts, laugh with my bros around the fire, fucking sleep, get eaten by a tiger, runny nose, I'm dead, you know? Like, listen, I'm not saying you have to hand it to Christopher Columbus, by the way. This is definitely not what I'm saying. But I think we have to, this is another thing that occurred to me when I was away, is we gotta stop making ignorant comments like, oh, a Coke Zero would kill a peasant from the 1300s if they drank it, okay? I think people in history were more resilient than we give them credit for, okay? Can you imagine how fucked up it would be to be like a dude on a ship? You're like, your job is like, tie in the fucking sail on the Sloop John B or whatever. And you're like, I'm going out to sea. I'm on the, I don't really know what we're doing, but I'm going out to sea. And then like eight months later, a third of the people you started with are dead. And then the dude in the bird's nest is like land ho. And then you, the shit runs aground and you get out and there's some motherfuckers who look like nothing you've ever seen before. That shit would kill me, man. If I got on like a little spaceship and I was like, I'm exploring the cosmos and then it, psh, psh, I got out and there were a bunch of people there who were like, what the fuck are you doing here? I would be like, what? I want to hear what the conversations were like when they got back on the ship. They were probably like, there's fucking people here, bro. What? They were here the whole time? The whole time? Even back in the Roman Empire? Back in Mesopotamia, there were people here? Mesopotamia, bro. Doesn't that blow your mind? Fucking plants growing that you've never seen before in your life. Literally, people from Italy get off the ship and see a tomato for the first time. It's just fucking crazy, man. It's like when Simon in Lord of the Flies found the pig's head in the forest. It's like they were celestially destined to be soulmates. That shit would blow me away. I could not handle it. I don't, I, I would lose, I would, I would, I better be like in the maester class or something like that. Cause I'd be writing some shit down that I would pass down through the annals of history. I'm like, guess what, bro? We got off on an island. The land looks just like our land. You know what was growing there? They'd be like, uh, fucking you. No, it was not you would, dumbass. It's corn. It's fucking weird little, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a bunch of little berries on a something that it looks like it's from an alien world. Anyway, they must have thought they were joking, right? You're you're absolutely right. Can you imagine being the first person to see like a lion, and you come back a year and a half later, you're talking to like a. An, an artist and you're like oh yeah yeah and then it's got like it's got a it's got long hair and a fucking beard and six inch long teeth it's <laughs> like, uh-huh okay sure yeah and they spit out one of the you know those uh goofy pictures that look like they're from like a where's waldo book that were drawn during like uh the war of the roses it's like a fucking weird little stick figure lion with big teeth and like a smile and fucking pointy eyes and stuff like that. You'd be like this, they'd be like, good enough. Anyway, I just, I'm just saying I couldn't fucking handle it, okay? So I don't know if a Coke Zero would kill someone in the 1200s. I would fucking lose my mind if I was part of the Age of Exploration, though. You probably could not get me on a ship back then. I, I wouldn't leave. NL in 1890 be like, just finished my John Philip Sousa 30-minute bully intensity ride. <laughs> NL in 1890 be like, I beseech you, thou shalt not pass me on the velocipede when Von Williams' pomp and circumstance starts playing. As soon as the sweet sound of da 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 touches thine ears, look for me in the greater distance beyond ye. It's 1522 and someone accuses you of being a witch. How do you get out of that? Honestly, I think you just get cooked, quite frankly. You know, I think, like, there's 
some situations, there's just no way out. I feel like if I'm back in the 16th century and someone accuses me of being a witch, I would be like, what do you guys think? And if they said, that sounds good to us, I guess I would be like, all right, fucking rinse me, we go again. Nobody's going to accuse you? I don't know. I do irritate people, plus I walk on my toes. I really, it's hard to believe though, that back in the day, they didn't figure out the problem with like the witch trials, right? Maybe they weren't looking for the problems. Maybe they were like, this is just a good way to get rid of people that we don't like. <laughs> but I feel like I could be like, you know, like just play this out, all right? If I'm innocent, I die, so I'm dead. Uh, and if I'm guilty, then you kill me. So, like, I'm gonna die either way. This doesn't really seem fair. Do you think there's a chance that they would be like, we never really thought of it that way? I mean, they must have been like, it's insane. The gulf between the smartest people and the dumbest people in history must be crazy, right? Like, on the one hand, you got, like, Archimedes. Or you got, like, these ancient, like, Islamic polymaths that invented like geometry trigonometry astrophysics and like philosophy in their life they were like they died when they were 31 years old and they were they invented like nine disciplines we still study today but then you also had motherfuckers making the laws who were like if two people have a legal dispute we'll just have them fight and god will make whoever's right win the fight like, are you serious? Could you put like Archimedes in charge of coming up with the rule of law? I'm not saying it would be perfect, but could you, it'd probably be better than that. You know, what you got, we, oh, he'll walk across hot coals if his feet get burned, he's guilty. What are you saying? It fundamentally does not make sense. What does one thing have to do with another? Hang on, I want, I want Spectral Pack. Add a gold seal to a random card in your hand. Or all cards go to a random rank. We gotta try this, man. All cards, high cards. It's pretty high. <laughs> oh, man. Well, how many nines we got in this? We got 11 nines in our deck. Holy. No way I just got an email ad that says rest in peace to Halloween savings. Dude, that's, it's pretty amazing. I can't, what is the state of email marketing these days? Can I tell you, I got got by a, by a Wikipedia email this morning. Let me see if I could, I think it should be illegal. I love Wikipedia. I think some of the emails that Jimbo Wales sends should be made illegal. This, the one I got today, sender Jimmy, as if like, you know, we're, we're friends. Subject, re my last message. <laughs> You're witnessing a master at work. You know I clicked on that email. And then here's the email. This picture of Jimmy Wales. Dear Ryan, please don't skip this one minute read. I'm sorry to interrupt, but time will soon run out to help us because the clock is ticking on this fundraiser. You became a Wikipedia supporter in 2021. Thank you. You've donated once. That makes you a rare exception who chooses to support a project that's helpful to everyone on the planet. I'm like, this guy's going. It sounds so official, man. I took the liberty of emailing you a second time. This is like the 500th time he's emailed me. I took the liberty of emailing you a second time on behalf of the Wikimedia Foundation because I wasn't sure you got a chance to read the first email we sent. I hope you know how crucial your commitment to supporting free knowledge has been to us. Me, when I give $3 to Wikipedia once, it wasn't $3, but that's a reference. You owe me $3. Wikipedia should accept the G Fuel sponsorship or something. I'm not going to believe that Jimbo Wales is in trouble until I go to the homepage and I see Jimmy playing fucking Raid Shadow Legends, okay? I see his ass saying we need a hundred thousand more signups to like tanks colon age of war. You just gotta download the game and play through the tutorial and then we're... <laughs>
Then I'll be like, holy shit. Jimmy, here's three bucks. I didn't know. I'm sorry. With this, today's Wikipedia is presented by HelloFresh. Hey, NL. I tried my parents' Peloton when I visited, and Dennis Morton played a rock concert recording where the singer said, we're all here to worship Satan. What the heck are you up to every morning? Uh, so I did that ride as well, but I don't know. It's just my upbringing or whatever. But when, like, a singer says, like, we're here to worship the devil or whatever, I'm just like, all right, brother. It doesn't really, like, freak me out or anything like that. It's kind of like... It's pretty, like kind of an inert phrase. It doesn't really, it doesn't pog me up and it doesn't frighten me. You know, there's people out there getting scared because like Doja Cat has short hair, saying she's like a satyr sent by the devil to corrupt the nation's youth. What the fuck is wrong with you, brother? You just got a haircut. Are you crazy? You're scared of snip, 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 ah, 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 snip, 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 snip. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> And yet someone said you were anti-theist earlier. Well, to be fair, I did say get the Book of Mormon out of the Olani Resort and Spa in Koalina, Hawaii. Ain't no one reading that shit when there's a lazy river two feet away. But I also think that's just like, you know. <laughs> that's just common sense. Also, we went to Volcanoes National Park in on Big Island in Hawaii near Hilo. And like from a hundred yards away, I saw two people standing next to uh, a stand that had like brochures on it. And I could only see it from the back. I knew immediately. I was like, that's the Jehovah's Witness canvassers. And it got me thinking, there must be like a factory somewhere that just makes that shelf, right? Like their whole job is just making the shelf that the Jehovah's Witnesses put the pamphlets on that are like, this is how... I, I gotta do, there should be like a podcast with some of the people that work at that factory. Like it's the same shelf in Vancouver that it is in Hilo, that it is in New York City. Like, I don't know if maybe they got a different supplier overseas or something like that, but I gotta get into the supply chain of who's making the Jehovah's Witness bookshelf. It seems like a really interesting concept. But I was also like, what are you doing here? This is one of the most like beautiful places on earth. If anyone was in a crisis, they would just walk through like the bubbling sulfur ponds and like they'd find something within themselves. They're not like, you gotta put that shit outside of like a Boston pizza in Markham, Ontario. When someone, like there's nothing rushing in from outside to fill the gap in their soul. Like their ass is here being fulfilled. You're wasting your time here. Go to like a, <laughs> go to an Olive Garden parking lot when you're like, you know, about to have a mental breakdown because there's no parking in the parking lot, even though the parking lot is 20 times bigger than the restaurant and the food's not that good. And you're like, why the fuck am I at Olive Garden in the first place? And why is everybody else at Olive Garden? Why can't I find a parking spot at Olive Garden? The restaurant fucking sucks. Then I'd be like, save me. Not at Volcanoes National Park. Let's go Celestial Pack first. Three of a kind. Three of a kind Venus. You know when that, when, is that book, when men are from Mars, women are from Venus? Is that book fiction or nonfiction? Sorry, I had a quick time event IRL. They wanted me to do a Windows update. I had to look at it closely to make sure I didn't click the wrong one. Is that by Isaac Asimov? Should we be fishing like five of a kind? Should we go crazy on this one? <laughs> oh, baby. Oh. Insanity. Yeah, I think after that, I'll probably play three nines. You should be fishing for some laughs so I don't fall asleep. What the hell are you talking about? I just read your comment. Like a minute and a half ago. You, you need more dopamine than that? Your receptors are all messed up, man. Discard up to five cards. I would like to... I'm discarding my five. I am. You, you know the nines are coming. Danny boy, you got nothing to worry about.
Tim Robinson voice, I guess I'll play these three nines and get over 7,000 points. That's pretty good. I don't know, I don't know what the joke is, but I laughed, which is a lot like I think you should leave, I guess. Um, we're going to the moon? I'm getting rid of the juggler. And then I'm taking Planet Joker, which is the third movie in the Joker trilogy coming out after the Lady Gaga one. And then I'm using... Okay, fool me, use me. Planet X me. It makes the Celestial Joker even better. Buy the Celestial, oh, no, 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 buy the Arcana first. I mean, Hermit is amazing. Spawns up to two random planet cards. Listen, at some point you gotta realize money isn't everything, man. Give me two more planets, Earth and Saturn, neither of which I expect to be that useful, but it's okay, we're getting, we're getting the stuff here. And this is an X, X is like in Bedmus. X should always come at the end. Planet X me. If I wanted a card with Uranus, I would get um, Zion Williamson's rookie card. Because he hasn't lived up to his colossal expectations that were handed to him when he entered the National Basketball Association. Right? Right? Reroll? I'm trying to make a joke about basketball here, okay? Maybe you're right. That's a good point. What have you played... What if you played that first? To try to maximize your chances of getting four or five of a kind. My lord. You know what? Tomo, you, you're whipping the cords way too much, man. Way too much. Oh! This hand is like uh, YTMND in 2004. Nine, nine, nine. Anyway, you get the. This is when Downfall came out. Sorry, Der Untergang. The final challenge. All cards debuffed until one Joker sold. Score at least fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I didn't know it was the. I didn't know it was the last shop, man. What? 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 Okay, I'm selling... Three of a kind Marty. Yes. Well, one of these two, but I think it's three of a kind Marty. And we just fish for, like, four of a kind whenever possible. We don't want three of a kind. I'm sorry to tell you, we don't want three of a kind. Discard me. We want five of a kind. Oh! Mine diamonds! That's a good hand. <laughs> How many nines I got left in this? Nine nines? Check it out, the man's a genius. Doesn't ruin our bus. This is basically just a discard. Levels up our bus. If we played the other jack, it would have ruined our bus. Oh! <laughs> then discard these. Start me here. I mean, this probably does it, but we could, I mean, we could just draw five nines. Guy's over, so we didn't really start there, did we? You won the demo! He's crazy! You aced it. Thank you. And a little advertisement. I don't mind, I like the hustle here. I respect it. At least you get less pissed off watching an advertisement for something you like, I guess. It's not like when my kid is doing like, you know, a Paw Patrol game on her iPad and then all of a sudden there's like a, an ad for a Bowflex or something like that. I'm like, little bro, she's not gonna buy a Bowflex. Her net worth is zero. Bro, there's nothing like rolling into your house. 7.15 a.m. after a red eye flight. And remembering that you stocked 32 Coke Zeros because you had a kid's birthday party like two days before you left. Oh! 
We had like 19 hours of flights and airports on the way back. I hear you. I felt bad because our, our dining partners, because we got paired with a, a random family. They were from a town in, uh, I think it's like, it's north of London at least. It's like part of a different jurisdiction. And we were like, oh, our flight's like 11 p.m. And we get back home at 7 a.m. That's going to be so awkward. And they were like, oh, that's cool. Our flight is at 10 a.m. And then we fly... Uh, like nine hours to New York City and then we have a three hour layover and then we fly six hours to London and then we take like a train two hours to our home where we then take a taxi and get home. Also, we have a 15 month old child and I was like, found the damn shorty you win. Okay, you got us. Hey, NL, I had to renew my license. And I couldn't stop, th I'm only reading this because this is DL Guiga, by the way. All I could think about is why, or what do you put as your hair color on your driver's license? So let me tell you something. We don't have hair color on our driver's licenses up here. But I think there's some shit on your driver's license that does not make sense. Why is my weight on my driver's license? You just fucking look at me and eyeball it, motherfucker. You don't need to know, what are you going to... Be like, oh, this is a fake ID. You don't look 182. Like, mm, you look more like a 196 to me. BC has hair color on it. One second here. I don't have my license on me. BC driver's license. Is this going to get me put on a list? BC driver's license template. <laughs> Hello? Hello? They got me, man. I don't know. It, it was my plosive. What was the last thing you heard? Did you not hear me say... Um, I was Googling what color hair driver's license bald. Last thing you heard is template. Oh my God. I was, cause then I looked at the template and I was like, it fucking does have your hair color on it. That's, I've never really looked at my driver's license. I don't know. I, I imagine it says brown, which is like true because my DNA has the recipe for brown hair, but is false because I don't have hair. It's kind of an interesting situation like that. Like my hair color according to my genome, like my genotype, my genotype hair color is brown. My phenotype, it's kind of a personal question. I'm not sure if you should be asking me that, but I would say it, right now it identifies as not having any fucking hair at all, really. And the Boolean, false, so true. They should put hair color as a Boolean. That wouldn't really make any sense at all, quite frankly, but they should do it because it'd be funny. Slash marker backpack battles. All right, I'm going to level with you. This one's entirely on chat, okay? Number one question when I got back was, are you going to play backpack battles? And as usual, when chat asks me something, I'm like, I have no idea. There's no context. There's no like link to more information. It's something I've never heard of and they're asking my opinions on it. <laughs> I'm like, I, we're, we're not at that step yet. But anyway, the most common question was, are you gonna play backpack battles? I go do some information for my, some research for myself, okay? I find out that the game is not out yet. It's a demo. I'm told it's a little bit like Backpack Hero meets Super Auto Pets. Let's try, let's try it out. It's available on Steam right now. For each star. For, okay, I understand. Let me see what we got here. Shop entered, gain gold. Garlic. Every, it's too much. Sorry, you got to cut that down a little bit. You got to, it's just a demo. You got to cut that down just a little bit. It's just garlic, bro. It was, I mean, yeah, it's versatile in food, but does it need nine different effects here immediately? Every four seconds, gain three shield, 50% chance to remove vampirism for your opponent. Vampirism heals one health per stack when hitting with a melee weapon. Block absorbs one damage per stack. Food triggers... Do these all happen with the garlic? It couldn't just be remove two damage? <laughs> no, yes, no. The top one is the effect. Okay. Oh, the, everything below it is a tooltip. So the effect is every four seconds gain three shields and you'll possibly remove vampirism. I see. And because this is a food, it would buff the banana. Okay, stone. Damage two, two, four. 
accuracy 85%. On hit, destroy three shield. Shield. On attack, 25% chance to gain six shield and remove a stamina from opponent. Whetstone. Weapons gain plus one damage. Slots marked with star will become star when the effect can be applied. Of course. Okay. Um, I'm going to go as simple as you can go here. And then... What the heck is going on? Holy cow. Start backpack battle. <laughs> Launch me, bro. <laughs> okay, whole Borvet versus Nero. So I'm going to be straight up with you, Nero. I don't, I don't like your chances right here. Never mind. What's your buff here? Regen's one health stack every two seconds. We're taking fatigue damage. We're too evenly matched. Yeah. I'm amazing. Round one. It's it's sap, bro. It's super auto pets. I've got an idea. Goobert goes here. Oh, but we'd like two items here. That's right. We'd like two items. Okay, hang on. Goobert goes. Oh, hang, hang on. <laughs> no more. Let me think about it. If you're so smart, let's see you try it. Because I want, like, I do want this, but I also want this one over. And then, like, okay. Goober rotates. Don't worry about you for a second. Don't 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 worry about you guys for just a second here. Now, you're the, you're the tricky one. You know, something like that. Goober's chilling. You're chilling. Now, that's only going to activate one time. This could activate... Wait, but these are going to combine, too. What what happens if... Become like a super stone? Oh! I, I thought, honestly, they could get sold. Okay, I like this for now. Oh, the stone is with the potion? What do you mean the stone's with the... I don't, do I even have a potion? Stone is pointing towards potion. Oh, in the shop! In the shop, the potion, the stone skin potion. I see... Stone Skin Potion absorbs one damage per stack. After activation, also applies the effect of the Blunk without Blunking it. What are you, what is, what are you, what are you talking about? This is not sap, by the way. This is like PhD sap. You guys lied to me. This dude's got an upside down bird in his backpack. Three bananas around some strawberry juice. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's going to take forever, man. I got I to gotta figure out what the hell I'm doing. You're rinsing them? That's true. <laughs> Upside down bird build is not that good compared to Bloodthorn. How do I know what items get activated by this? Like, why is it? It must be a. Is it a food? They have to be nature items. <laughs> is garlic nature? Yes, confirmed. Garlic is nature. You have a 5% chance to resist poison for every nature item. We don't need to stack too many. I don't think we need to stack too many nature items. It's That's if we're going up against poison builds. We'd love to have it. You want it on the sword? I want, we want what on the... What, I want, what, what? Like that? You need it on the... It will be better than what... Affected 5% chance. Okay, now I need to... I need your help. Why does it matter that the sword gets the star instead of, like, garlic, for example? It doesn't. Oh, okay. I'm not worried. I'm not, the game is not called, like, get the most stars. The game is called beat your opponent's ass. Can I move this whole backpack over here and put fanny pack right here? You can? Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Can I go like, oh, that's, oh, what have I done? <laughs> Work with me for just a second here. Okay, now. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but just everybody chill out. You guys are really playing this like on your phones while you fucking take a dump? <laughs> Just crazy. Roll me again. 
I'm losing it, man. Upside down bird? To a lightsaber? Can I, can I, can I fucking make... Okay, okay. Well, now Goober is... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just moving stuff now, man. I can't, I, can't, I can't keep it together. You know what? Ripped to this stone, and thus the bag of stones. I'm built different. We're taking a bird, man. It's another nature item, too. Holy cow! Oh, what is gonna... I gotta rethink my whole world, man! Rotate it, you geniuses! <sighs> now, everybody, just relax for a second. It might take me 20 minutes to figure this out, okay? But we're gonna get it. We want the bird to see as much nature as possible. Nah, I lost it. <laughs> what do you mean this isn't nature? How is this not how is this not nature, bro? Be honest, how is this not nature? It is? Why is it not golden up then? It doesn't trigger? Oh, because Ivy doesn't have a trigger. Christ. <laughs> Send me. The hell is this, Eddie? He's got Sarah Angel. I'm out here getting my ass beat. Hold! Hold! <laughs> uh. Star items gain 5% crit chance for each luck. Gloves of haste. Items trigger 20% faster. No, affected items trigger 20% faster. Okay. And every... Three seconds, star items trigger 5% faster. <laughs> what the fuck, man? What the fuck? <laughs> it's too much, man. Just send it. <laughs> Just too much shit to... to Take your out, man. Like, it's like, okay, I could easily fit the gloves. All we gotta do is, like, rotate the pineapple. If we rotate the pineapple, we no longer get the extra effect of the pineapple being in the fanny pack, which is, like, a 10% faster uh, every 4 seconds, every 3.6 seconds. And instead, you gain one spike and heal for 3. But then if you gotta... It's just like everything you change is, like... It's the butterfly effect, man. I'm just gonna focus on making my bird cool. How does that strike you? Are you nature? You are. Items, activated items gain 5% crit chance for each luck. That's fine. I'm just gonna pop you down. Right here. Right here. Right here. Somebody explain to me why the bird is not hitting the acorn collar as an activated item. It doesn't, because it has no trigger. Okay. Right, okay, fine. Fucking whatever. Start me up. Let's, let's beat some ass. <laughs> Egghead. It begins. I know I'm in trouble because they got 17 status effects before the round even started. But wait, wait, I, I cleanse poison debuffs. I cleanse poison debuffs. Why is my poison debuff not de getting cleansed by my bird? Or whatever, I don't know. 
They got more stamps. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, holy armor! At the start of battle, gain 55 shields. Gain two blank for every blank. Fucking if blank. It's too much like real life. Lightsaber. It's a blank and a blank, and if you blank, then you blank on your blank, unless your opponent has a blank, in which case, blank and blank and go blank yourself. And if you don't, if you blank when someone blanks, in this condition, 50% chance to blank, what if you, unless they've got extra lightning resistance, in which case, you're gonna blank. You're a, you're a six-piece Andy? Okay, I understand. Oh no, oh no. Undo, undo. <laughs> how do, how do, is there a drop everything in? Yes, okay. Drop everything in storage, please. Let's build it from. Let's build it back from zero. Why does it look so stupid? This backpack looks like Homer Simpson's car. First, uh, just, okay, let's start from brass tacks, okay? The hell is Jinx Tortilla? <laughs>
just because it makes more sense. Like, I, if I was going up against somebody, if I saw that they had a um, an empty space in their backpack, I would assume that they sucked. And I don't want to be stunted on like that. So I'm going to show them a fully optimized backpack so they get scared. Huh. Yeah, like, look, this guy's got so much empty space. See if I care. Whole board vent versus depression. Ooh, a little close, a little close for comfort. Oh! How would you describe your bowel movements? Normal? Yes. Why? I was just, I was just scared. When your wife says, how would you describe your bowel movements? Normally she's, she's not asking me to describe them. They describe themselves. <laughs> it's been, it's been good. How about you? I told you. Well, pooping twice in one day is not necessarily bad, but I do sort of feel like you wouldn't have said it if it wasn't. It's not usual. It's not usual. Okay. It happens. I mean, we've been all out of sorts, right? Up is down, down is up, cats and dogs living together, etc., etc. Cleanse blindness and heal for eight every three seconds. Become invulnerable. You're triggering it too. Holy cow. But you don't have every time. Just, it's too complicated, man. I think you gotta get out of here. The book comes in here because it triggers more often. And then forget about the lucky pig. Everything's slotted, eight gold. Just start, let's save some money. Start me up. Okay. What the hell is this? Samwise Gamgee? Back, backpack full of fucking herbs and vegetables? Like, is it an apothecary in a village in Skyrim? Hang on. We win these? I've become exalted? For some reason, my, my character was covered in a... in a golden aura? Artifact stone cold. <laughs> what? the hell is this? They're putting a lot of sauce on it, that's for sure. Can only be thrown once per battle on hit inflict cold. Why is this good? It makes... Oh, but if the weapon hits... It, oh, because we can make our weapon cold. Oh! <laughs> okay. What the hell? The golden frying pan? Eggs caliber. Very clever. They do have 10 lifesteal. That seems bad for me. On the other hand, they also seem like they're slow as molasses now. I don't know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> Chibli, has your audience asked you to play this? I actually, like, can't lose, but I have no clue what I'm doing, man. I'm not scared of anybody. I mean, I'm cold, but you're fucking freezing, bro. Like, it's over. The only round we lost was round one. The hell? Regular sapphire. We have two regular sapphires. Oh! <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I mean, I feel like if you need to get over the hump, a heroic potion makes a lot of sense. Why not improve your amethyst? And honestly, I'd like to buy some legendary gear next time. Start me up. Lamp seems good. I'm just going to be honest with you. The lamp could be amazing, but I'm not reading all that shit. I'm not even sweating it. We'll just wait till the ice gets a hold of you. Wait till you feel the steely chill of the ice. Oh. 
There was never a doubt in my mind. Start survival mode, survive for 18 rounds. Ranking change could be up to 77. I mean, <laughs> gotta try. I feel like the cold gem is carrying us. Yes, it is. Okay. At least I, I understand that. Oh, no! Yes! <laughs> oh. Ooh. Holy cow. 260 HP. Dude's got a damn commissary going in his backpack. For the first time in my life, I ran out of Stam. Hang on. We got vampirism. We got cold. We're hanging in here. It looks like the average suburban soccer mom shopping cart when they check out of Costco. <laughs> the Costco, uh, the person that, me rolling up to the Costco, the guy at Costco who checks your receipt with a backpack full of fucking, me when I roll up to the perfect amethyst. 100% chance to remove a random buff from your opponent? Uh, check please. Hang on, I think I got there somewhere. I, I got there. <clears throat> Guy at the Costco checking my receipt. Is there anything else? The 64 T-bone steaks I shoved down my cargo pants? Nope. Resident Evil Joker. Holy cow. You can't tell me they didn't plan that. Having exactly 69 shields. It seems bad. It seems so doable. Oh! <laughs> I honestly, best of luck to you. I don't think it's reasonable that one human being could be expected to understand what's happening here. <laughs> you survived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've made it to bronze. Bronze 68. That's it? I thought we could keep going. Well, I played for like two hours and... I lost three rounds, I think, in total. So I might just be the best in the world. What can I say? Bronze 68. It seems fun, but it's, it is very overwhelming at first, for sure. But your, your, your plan, your mission, it made sense. You lied to me, told me it was just like sap, and then... By the time I realized it wasn't sap, I was already enjo uh, enjoying myself. So, you, you kind of Trojan horsed it in there. It is like sap, in a manner of speaking. It's 2 p.m. Why is it dark outside? Kate, are you seeing this? It's dark out. It's 2 p.m. It's dark outside? Take me back. I normally end the stream at 2 p.m., right? I'm not losing my mind. Let me, let me see if Kate's ready to stream. Hello. Are you ready to stream? Smiley face. It's freaking chilly down here too, bro. Winter hit while you were out. You're telling me my hands are cold. Good to be back. Yeah, it's a short week just because we started on Wednesday, but let me think. We gotta play some Lies of P at some point. And then following, the, I think we're gonna play some Jackbox on Friday. Is it true the new Jackbox comes out like tomorrow? Gotta give that a shot. Maybe Malf will play if I promise we never do the wheel. There's another trivia game in the Jackbox pack. Oh! It reminds me, on the cruise, Kate and I finally got a chance to do some of the trivia. Our daughter was old enough to come with us and just like, you know, hang out or watch her iPad for a bit. Some of you guys are cool. Do not 
go do Disney trivia on a Disney cruise. You are going to get your ass beat unless you're an insane person. I don't think, realistically speaking, I know I have a diverse audience. Nobody uh, watching this is going to win Disney trivia at Disney Cruise. Okay, so we went, we went, it was like Pixar trivia. I was like, I've seen most of the Pixar movies. Kate likes them a lot too. We got a chance. It was like question one. What's the name of the rat in Ratatouille? I'm like, fucking it. Ratatouille. Kate's like, no, it's Remy. I'm like, oh shit, you're right. Okay, question two. What's the name of the dinosaur in Toy Story? I'm like, boom, Rex. This is, we're going to get perfect. The next question was, what is the famous numerical code that the Human Containment Bureau shouts out in Monsters, Inc. when they notice a sock on the back of the monster's outfit? And I was like, fucking, I don't know. Kate was like, I don't know. Everyone in the group was like, it's called 2319, 2319. And then the person administering the trivia and was like, how do you know that? And then they were like, I've watched the movie a lot. Also, did you know that 2319, it's called 2319 because W is the 23rd letter of the alphabet and 19 is the, or the uh, wait, one second here. I got fucking twisted up. Basically, it's a white sock W S W is the 23rd letter of the alphabet. Sock is the 19th letter of the alphabet. And I was like, I'm fucked, brother. I'm getting my ass beat. Um, so we, I would say we averaged, sorry, S is the 19th letter. I would say we averaged like 12 to 14 out of 20 questions, right? Every single time there were like eight teams that had a perfect score. And here's the thing that was driving me crazy. No disrespect. Some of these people were probably amazing at other forms of trivia, but the teams that won the Disney trivia, they would always have a tiebreaker that required like common sense and they would shit their whole ass. I'm sorry to put it in those phrasings. But one of the tiebreakers was like, how long in minutes is onward? Pixar's onward. And you're like, you're thinking, you're like, okay, it's a movie, um, but movies have been creeping up in length lately. And, uh, you know, Pixar usually tries to come in just be before the two hour mark or something like that. One team said 86 minutes. I'm like, are you crazy? You think Disney Pixar greenlit an 86 minute long children's movie? You wouldn't even, the movie would be over by the time you came back with your concessions. Yeah, this guy, you gotta put your base, like a movie is two hours long minus up to 30 minutes if it's for kids. However, Pixar movies tend to creep it up a little bit more. I don't know if it's like a shareholder thing, but yeah, movies in the modern era are not 86 minutes long. Come on. I mean, sorry, I thought I just heard some shouting upstairs. Is Kate live? I do hear her going. She's, she's saying something. She's live. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll send you over there. It's all right. It's, it's, you know, it's, we're still paying by the message here over on Discord. So don't let me know so I can go have some lunch. It's okay. Just go enjoy yourself. It's okay. First day back. We're shaking the rust off a little bit. I understand. We went to the Dole Plantation near the pineapple, pineapple plantation. And um, I was there to buy, apparently, so I didn't, I was looking to buy Hawaiian shirts. But Hawaiian shirts are the most difficult thing to buy in Hawaii. You would think, how is that possible? It's called a Hawaiian shirt. How is it hard to buy in Hawaii? Joanna. It's, it, it's so hard to buy genuine Hawaiian shirt. There were a lot of fake Hawaiian shirts. Any shirt from Hawaii is Hawaiian shirt? Joanna. No, it's not. There's a genuine Hawaiian shirt and there's like a fake Hawaiian shirt. Sans Spike, thank you very much for 88 months. Hawaiian shirts have a Shorty Hawaiian shirt, shirt Hawaii cut. Hawaiian shirt. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Y'all, let it rain, dude. Let me just, let me just enjoy this rain. Thank you very much, Sans Spike, for 88 months. And you, Watanabe, for 9 months. We're so we back. We are so back. And Mad Dog Nation with the 5 sub. Poggy, cool Nathan, thank you very much for two months. 
Equal sequel. Yo, my man is my man is here. Equal sequel, the only rare card. Rare B. One and only. But anyways, Hawaiian shirt, the genuine Hawaiian shirt has its own cut, like its own shape of, of shirt. Fake wannabe Hawaiian shirts are it's just a normal shirt cut. Hawaiian shortcuts, you'd be like, okay, what does that mean? Like the Hawaiian shirt, their length of the torso is quite short. And then the sleeve part is a little bit longer than usual. So if you were to see the genuine Hawaiian shirt and then wannabe Hawaiian shirt, they got a different cut and they don't like the patterns are um, like the, the genuine one is like genuine pattern. And then the fake one is just like, I don't know, just leaves. Just random leaves or random pineapples or random coconuts or something like that. It's true. You just don't understand. I wanted genuine Hawaiian shirts. Went to so many stores. They were selling fake Hawaiian shirts. They were all like, you know, made in China and stuff like that. I'm like, where can I buy the Hawaiian shirt? And then you, you will not believe me the best place to buy the hawaiian shirt is actually in the dole plantation the pineapple plantation there's a korean lady who in the gift shop in the corner of the gift shop she's selling genuine hawaiian shirts and the price is right other places prices vary from 30 to 120 130 um but in this place it was 35 made in hawaii and the price was genuine and uh the the shop owner lady is korean she was talking to another korean tourist and they the korean tourist said, asked like oh we already bought a hawaiian shirt uh, we're just wondering how much are your hawaiian shirt just to just to compare the price and then she said um they're 35 each and the Korean tourists, they were like, oh, dang it. We paid 55 for hours. And she's like, oh, well, you guys got a little scammed. And she's like, dang. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went there. I was browsing. I wanted to get Hawaiian shirts for Luna, Hawaiian shirts for Ryan, Hawaiian shirt for me. And then I was looking for Ryan's first, like, you know, like browsing. And then she said, Oh, are you looking for Hawaiian shirt for your boyfriend? And I said, Oh, no, I'm looking for Hawaiian shirt for my husband. And she said, Huh? For your husband? And I said, Yeah, I'm married. And she said, You're married? And I said, Yeah, I even have a daughter. And she said, you even have a daughter? And she was flipping. And she, she's Korean. So you cannot say, oh, you know, different race. Can I see the other races age or whatever? She's, she's, she's my, my race. She's my, I'm Korean. She's Korean. So there is no excuse there. And then uh, at the perfect timing, Ryan and Luna came by and said, mommy, what are you doing? And she said, oh my God, is that your daughter? I said, yeah, she's my daughter. He's like, oh, she's so cute and also much older than I thought. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm 31 years old. And she's like, you're 31 years old? I thought you were 19 or 18. And I was like, this is the place that I need to buy the full set of Hawaiian shirts. This lady deserves a lot. <laughs> so I, I got mine and I got for Ryan, I got the whole set for Luna. And then she said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Here's like the like a little gift for you. It's just oh, the yeah. fake flower, um, like a bracelet. Like it's, I don't know how to describe it, but it, has, it says like Hawaii. It's very cute. And I said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And she gave that to Luna to just like, oh, you know, your daughter is so cute. She's like, oh, your daughter is so cute. I'm like, don't, no, I have to tell everyone that the best place to buy the Hawaiian shirt. The genuine Hawaiian shirt with the good price is Dole Plantation. Inside of the gift shop, there's a, there's a little corner. And then there's a Korean lady. She sells Hawaiian shirt. It's genuine. The price is right. Go there and buy it. <laughs> but I, we did like a food tour. 
I don't know if Ryan talked about much of Hawaiian trip. First of all, in in our experience, Hilo was beautiful. Um, I get that Hilo basically has active volcanoes and it's it's literally just erupting. You know, every other day they get earthquakes, they get tsunami. It's not a very pleasant place to live in, I guess. But to visit, it was beautiful. It was like the nature was preserved. I guess preserved because it's keep destroying it. <laughs> the lava flow, the continuous of lava flow and volcanic activity, anything that is not letting the nature be preserved is basically destroying it and the nature just grows on top. But it was so... I, I'm a huge uh, geology slash geography kind of person. Um, Earth science was my... Basically a second major. First major, performance of music. Second major, earth science. As a person who is super interested in earth science... When I went to Hilo, it was almost like a jackpot. I'm like, wow, this place is amazing. Like igneous rocks, you know, just all the things that I saw in the textbook were there. And you can see the layers of the lava flow and, and how much like, like, oh, I was freaking out the whole time. <laughs> like, oh, look at this igneous rock. Oh, my God, look at this minerals. Blah, 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 just basically nerding out the whole time and then we saw the lava cave or lava tunnel um it's so cool how that is created is that the outside of the lava cools down cools down faster because it's exposed to air but then the inside of the lava it keeps warm because lava is molten rock right so basically, the inside of lava uh, goes down the hill while the outer lava cools down and becomes, forms like a little cave, like a chamber. And most of the times, they collapse because it's not a thick layer of, um, you know, like earth or rock. So things grow on top, trees, plants. And those outweights the cave and the collapse. And, you know, that's the end of it. But I guess it takes, you know, it doesn't take like a day for it to collapse. It takes years for it to collapse. So you can actually go see the inside of it. It was super cool. I love caves. But this is like, you can only see it in, in Hilo, basically. Like, wow. I was like, whoa, <laughs> wow, this is so cool. You can see, like, you can see the layers of, of, of lava. Like, wow, this is so cool. And then our tour guide said, there's a really low ceiling point. You really have to watch out for that. There is no warning sign whatsoever. So just don't bonk your head. Just see where you're going and don't bonk your head on that low ceiling point. And then everyone in our tour bus was like, okay, we got you. And nobody got hurt. But then one of the um, older gentlemen took very long time to come back. We were worried. We we're like, oh my God, he must have bonked his head and just knocked him out. And then he came back after five or 10 minutes late. And we said, oh my gosh, what happened? Are you okay? And he said, yeah. So what happened was there was a guy in front of me. And he was not paying attention and he smashed his head onto that lower ceiling area. Like what I mean, he bonked his head like he knocked himself out. So he tried to help him out by dragging, dragging him out of the cave and, and trying to get help. Then that took a long time. And we were like, oh my God, is he okay? And he's like, I don't know, man. He like really knocked himself out. Like it basically echoed the whole cave because he bonked so hard. And I'm like, holy. And then as we we're going down, we see, we saw an ambulance going up. I'm like, oh, that, that ambulance must be for him. But it was, 
it was crazy. I I guess it's kind of crazy that they're not handing out a hard hat like the safety helmet. But I, I get it. <laughs> it's kind of you know, <laughs> you watch out for yourself or or else. Dot dot dot. Ryan almost bonked his head. I saved him. I said, Ryan, watch out! And he's like, ah! Saved his freaking eggshell, dude, or he would have cracked it. But it's, uh, the, the nature in Hilo was beautiful. It's, it's almost, I was able to see the true Hawaiian island, like the, the look of a true Hawaiian island. And the reason being is, like I said, it doesn't really let you have a like a forever building there because the, the lava, the volcanic activity is continuously happening. So it, it will just destroy whatever. So it's super cool. And then, so I think the Hilo tour was basically the peak. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, the Hilo was amazing. Maybe it's going to be more amazing in Honolulu, but then it was like, it was just going downhill. <laughs> it was like, oh, Hilo, Hilo was the peak, and then every other Hawaiian islands were just kind of like, ooh. I was like, oh, this is not what I expected. So I didn't realize in Hilo there was, there was no chicken, so I didn't know there were chickens everywhere. But everywhere else, there's chicken. There, there are chickens everywhere. And... I realized that as a city person, I am definitely not used to seeing wildlife. You know, like, sure, pigeons, but imagine the size of a pigeon versus a chicken. You know what I mean? They're like 10 times bigger. And seeing wild chickens, were, it was so, like, I was so nervous. You would be thinking, I was just chicken. If you don't... I just, I don't know why. It just felt like a dinosaur. Like legit dinosaur walking around me. They kept going. Ka -ka! Like screaming out of their lungs. And then, you know, the, the cockfight. They were doing that legit in front of my eyes. They just, the chickens are insane. There's no order of things. Just the... Ch the chicken just saw another chicken and the chicken just fight like bah, 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 like they're screaming like ah and feathers fly i'm like what's going on dude i'm just walking down the street and then just chickens going crazy like what the hell's going on dude it was i thought i thought oh, oh maybe just that area has chicken or something nah dude chickens everywhere i was freaking i'm like they gotta stop the chickens they're so scary, man. They're so scary. Oh my god. So, hello. Hello. There was no chicken. Probably got all killed by volcanic activity. But then, anywhere else other than hello, chickens everywhere. Just cock a doodling do everywhere. Screaming, fighting. Like, just, oh. I thought I was gonna get murdered by chickens there it's like if it's one chicken it's not scary if there are dozens of chicken around me it's so much scary because dozens of chicken if they were to form hive mind and wanted to kill me i think i would i would get killed like you know legend of zelda style like you you upset one chicken whole bunch of chicken fly in and like fuck you up like it's it was legit that but in real life one chicken, no problem. There's a Link! Link, the greatest hero who saved many, many worlds. God freaking always gets messed up by chickens. He cannot defeat the swarm of chickens. You know chickens are fucked up. It was so scary. I just... I was, I was so scared. And I'm, I'm, I went to my Discord, my sub only Discord, Discord, and I was like, guys, why are there so many chickens? Why are there so many chickens in Hawaii? I did not realize there were so many chickens in Hawaii. And there are chickens in downtown Honolulu too. I'm like, what the hell, dude? It was, it was cool though. Going to Hawaii, um, triggered my ptsd when i was young and i got hurt really badly in in hawaii it's not hawaii's fault it's my parents fault but because i got hurt really bad in hawaii that i just had like a little trauma um going there kind of triggered it i felt like a little sick but then being there 
It was good. People do be chill, but then Ryan was dying. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I don't wanna I don't wanna bring this up because I might just sound like a little, you know, just a salty old man. But there were they were I kind of agree with Ryan. Whatever things were not working, instead of fixing the problem, they just go Mahalo for your understanding. Mahalo is like, thank you. This is like, oh, it's not working. We know it's not working, but aloha. This is Hawaii. We're not going to fix it. Just but thank you for your understanding. And there were a lot of that. And it was kind of annoying. Like, for example, there was a toilet, like in the bathroom. It said on the, on, like on top of the toilet, it said, um, our we we know this toilet has a very weak flush and it doesn't work very well but mahalo for your understanding and i'm like bro fix your toilet what the fuck thank you for your understanding my toilet is fucking broken but you can use it what the hell that is the most dumbest shit of all time it's like <laughs> like legit it has one job and that one job is to flush. And the flush is not good, but thank you for your understanding. If you try that shit in Vancouver, people will be like, yo, your toilet is fucking broken. Fix it, dude. Are you crazy? What do you mean thank you for your understanding? But we went to another Hawaiian island. It's not Honolulu or Hilo or Maui. But anyways, we went there. Um, people were crazy for shaved ice right the shaved ice dessert and then there were legit two people working in this shop two people both of them are the cashier and then both of them were the servers so and and shaved ice takes so long to make right because they cannot they cannot have ready made you have to shave the ice by the order and shaving ice it's not like or like scoop scoop you cannot scoop the shaved ice right you have you have to just wait for the machine to shave the ice and you just basically kind of have to rotate the dish and pack the shaved ice and you gotta squeeze out five different flavors of rainbow syrups takes a long time but there are there was only two people working there and then in the sign it says we've been looking for people to uh work here but we have not gotten any help Mahalo for your understandings. It will take a long time. So it's like, oh yeah, we realize a bunch of tourists love our shop. They come in just to use their money, but we can't get anyone. So just thank you for your understanding. Wait 30 minutes for your shaved eyes. <laughs> and we're like, really? Really? Well there were there were a lot of like Mahalo for your understanding. It's like we know there's a problem. And it's it's a critical problem. We know. But aloha. Mahalo. <laughs> this is the Hawaiian way. And we were a little ticked off for sure. There were there were quite a lot of that. <laughs> there's nothing we can do, dude. Come on. Our local government in a nutshell. Oh no. But anyways, overall we still enjoyed Hawaii. It was uh we went to when we went to food tour in Honolulu, I think we legit drove around the whole island. And I think I believe our tour guide said on the east side of the island is very dry. It's like the desert, it doesn't rain. But then on the west, it always rains. Something like that, or maybe reverse. I couldn't really hear him because we were sitting all the way at the back and he wasn't, he wasn't um, mic'd up. <laughs> so I'm like, huh? Huh? What is he saying? <laughs> huh? <laughs> like, what? East? Oh, what? West? Couldn't hear him. But we, and then we, um, we went to all the beaches. I, I liked how, oh man. I the the name of the beaches are really so funny. Like Sandy Beach, Sunset Beach. 
It really do be the name of beach. <laughs> sandy beach! I mean, come on! Beach gotta be sandy, dude. Like, sandy beach. Makes sense. Sunset beach. You will see sunset on the beach. Sunset beach. I was like... All these names? 10 out of 10. It was so funny. You know, did I ever tell you guys? During dinner time, when me and my me and Ryan were just talking, Luna goes, "Stop talking!" And I and we we're we we're like, "Huh?" And she's like, "I don't like when you two talk." <laughs> I think she gets jealous because it's just me and Ryan talking, and she doesn't get involved in the conversation. So she's like, "You two stop talking." It's like unless we're talking to her, unless. In the conversation she's involved, she doesn't like us just talking. And it's hard because I like to talk to Ryan. And when we talk to Luna, we, we cannot really talk much, right? We cannot be like, oh, you know, Trump went jail. Ha ha ho 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 ho. You know, like, we cannot make jokes like that. Because <laughs> she's like, she doesn't understand what's going on. So it's like, I miss talking to my husband. It's having a child. It's like, um... You know how some people, they don't understand why we like cruise? Honestly, we get you. Because I think when we, if we went to any cruise before Luna, months, we definitely would have not liked it. But basically, having a child, you have created a prison. <laughs> Baby prison. And you will... Be in this baby prison until the baby grows up, right? So when the baby, when you're in the baby prison, three sixty-five days, twenty-four hours, you either you can be at home and you have to clean up all the shit that they throw on the ground, or you can be on the cruise where at least you don't have to cook, clean, and you know, like lots of and like. Um, you can, you can basically have beer at any time <laughs> without any guilt. So it kind of makes the baby jail situation a lot easier. And I think that's how we enjoy cruise because it is like almost the perfect place to be if you are in baby jail. It's hard to explain if you're not in the baby jail, but when you are on the cruise, you see a lot of baby jail fellows <laughs> and then we give them a nod like oh you're in the baby jail we're in the baby jail everybody share the baby jail it's just hard to explain but once you're in it you kind of understand if you had two children luna could bother the younger one that is so like the most misconception of all time you'd be asking how do you know you only have one kid i got two nieces that's what my sister said, and I, I know how they react, and I know how they were when they were young, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and also, not to mention, I have older sister, so I lived being, having a sibling. And you'll be asking, oh, but my older brother or my older sister are ha having a sibling. Uh, was amazing yeah not for me man <laughs> no for me man and also not to mention as I, as I i i said you know when me ryan we talk while we're eating dinner luna goes stop talking <laughs> imagine me having a, another baby luna will flip she'd be like kill that baby <laughs> throw away that baby you must love me and not that baby. <laughs> she will legit like not like that baby. I'm not honestly, I'm very like introvert. I don't really care about making friends. I prefer no friends. That's why I have a very little amount of friends. <laughs> Whenever I have to talk to anybody, you will think I'm very sad, but I'm not. I just go to my sub only discord and, and all my friends are there. <laughs> I don't text my friends. My friends are my subbies, dude. I just go to sub only Discord and they're there and then they they're like, hey Kate, I'm like, yeah, my friends. 
They're my friends. So look at my most recent message. Exception lowly nickel. He's kind of like he's he's for the ride. He's like, you know, he's the he's the little you know, like little brother that comes along, but nobody wants that little brother, but nobody can say like we don't want the little brother to be here because it's rude. So you just let the little brother kind of come along. <laughs> He's the little brother. <laughs> okay, you can play. Okay, you can join. Okay. All your friends and origin. Origin. Origin is the like the weird guy in the corner. But sometimes it's funny, so you let him come to your party. Because it's like, sometimes it's cool and funny, but most of times it's just salty. But then he's not so salty that he's annoying, so you just let him be in the corner of the party. And the orange goes, what do you mean, all cap? <laughs> Every mod's a target today? No, Sir Toasty, I don't really target him at all. Lowly kind of deserves it. He just, if you look at our sub only Discord message by Loli, you kind of go like, yeah, plus two deserved. <laughs> Origin, I mean, we have 112 months together. I think, I think we have a good bond. No, you cannot make Toasty young because Toasty and Library, they're the same age. So if you're saying Toasty is 14, then Library 14, but then Library always goes like, ooh, ooh my waifu, anime waifu, ooh, ooh, uh, I forgot her name. Fontina, the, the, the VTuber, like, oh, she's so hot. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, Fauna, I'm gonna wear her hoodie, all, all that, all that. Fauna stuff, Fauna, booby, mouse pad. Oh my God, give me that, give me that. You cannot make Sir Toasty young anymore. Because they're the same age. I don't want like a 14 year old boy going like, Fauna, booby, mouse pad, ooh, 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 ooh. WTF, stop, I never do that. Oh my gosh, you're such a liar. Go to your Twitter page. Retweet it by Library of Letourneau. Ooh, ooh, anime, ooh, ooh. Oh, I got some lewd anime figurines and my co-workers visiting me in my apartment. I don't know where to hide this lewd anime figurine. Help. Listen, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. Seems like I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who Fauna was until library went like lick, lick, Fauna. Or like lick emoji, lick emoji, fauna so hot, lick emoji. I avoid fauna posting on main. You 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 should avoid a bit more because you're you're still you're still posting. <laughs> when someone says avoid, they try to completely avoid. But like you saying avoid is like ninety percent fauna posting. Also, it was so funny how. What was it? Um, what did they say? The pilgrimage of Northern Lion, like he did the pilgrimage to come come to Vancouver. He could have had a great time enjoying time with his friend, but he went through the pilgrimage. I was like, my God, if that is not parasocial, I don't know what is. <laughs> It's not, it's not called Vancouver Tour. It's, it's called Pil Northern Lion Pilgrimage. He should have, he, you, you know what? I actually have a great idea for you. All the videos that you took, you should just title it um, Vlog slash Northern Lion Pilgrimage and just upload it on YouTube. It, it, will, it will get a lot of hits. I'm just like, imagine... Imagine one of us paying library to make videos. It will have our actual address. He would have like, Hey guys, this is Northern Lion's house right behind me. <laughs> the thought of that, oh my gosh. Cold sweats in my back. Make him cat sit next time. Are you crazy? That gotta be the end of our house. Our house will be burnt to crisp. 
This is where Northern Lion made his 2000 Binding of Isaac video right here. I'm gonna sit on this chair and watch Fauna videos. Lick emoji. <laughs> I I did not dox your face, bro. You doxed yourself. I did not say, hey, post your face. You went, guys, uh, eating raw onion is not a big deal. Here's a video of me eating it. And then I was not gonna show your face to Ryan. But then I saw the post of pilgrimage of Northern Lion. And you're like, uh, Northern Lion came here. I gotta eat this. Northern Lion did this here. I gotta do this here. And I'm like, my God, this guy's crazy. And then Ryan was like, wow, this guy's crazy. I'm like, oh, do you want to see his face? <laughs> it just came out like that. It's crazy how... He went to the Costco hot dog. <laughs> the downtown Costco hot dog. Um, Vancouver Aquarium ice cream. Because my daughter likes Vancouver Aquarium ice cream. I was like, bro, I'm scared. <laughs> it's good that he does not know where we live. Or things would have been even more creepy. What do you think I would have done? I'm not crazy. It's like... Who was that guy who murdered his whole family? And then, and then the judge is like, yo, you're a monster. You, you, mur you murder your whole family. You murder your wife. You murder your child. And he's like, I'm not a monster. I'm not a monster. I did not kill them. It's like, <laughs> it's like same energy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Oh. Uh, this is as bad as the pasta dish episode. What do you mean? Past the dish episode. The part where library went, oh my gosh, Kate. Nobody owns past the dish. You're crazy. Kate, you're the crazy one. Three hours later. Oh, is this the pasta dish? I have four of them in my kitchen. Took a photo of pasta dish and everyone goes, um, yeah, that's pasta dish. It was really funny, right? No, no, it was not funny because for at least one hour or two or maybe three, the whole time you were like, Kate is crazy, everybody. Does anyone own pasta dish? What the frig is pasta dish? Only the crazy person owns pasta dish. It is the dumbest shit of all time. And I was like, the whole time I was streaming, like, oh, man, I'm crazy one, man. Oh, man, I didn't know the past I did was such a weird thing. And the whole time I was, like, defending myself. I'm like, oh, I thought it was, I, thought, I didn't think it was weird. And then three hours later, he owns four of them. <laughs> That's it, nervously laughing. Ha, 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 ha. You're lucky that I did not pin that message. I could, I could backtrack, pin it. <laughs> the crime, and then maybe I could make, maybe with the power of Sir Toasty, I can make edited video of crimes, title, title of the video, crimes of library. And then all these, all these stuff that you have said to me, <laughs> I'll just lay it out. Guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> With the power of Sir Toastia, I'm not a Thanos glove. You're not a Thanos glove, you're Thanos himself. Holy! Well, now I'm starting to feel a little bad clueless. Thank you, Watanabe, for the 20 gift sub. Thank you, thank you. He's so back. <laughs> what a prank. <laughs> Have you seen Slackers? I don't think I can imagine any other streamer who might have seen it. Have I seen Slackers? What a ridiculous question. I love you, but I hate you. Which brings to mind how much I love you. We could have worked things out, you know, in my little room, in my little locked room. I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave. The one-dimensional man He 
She's filed under cocksucker in my little black book. Sweetness can rot your teeth. Bittersweet cacophony. And you hold the key. You hold the. You think I don't know every word from slackers? Devin Sawa, Jason Schwartzman. Kind of insane this information occupies space in your brain. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that sometimes when I like I hear a song, usually like during a Peloton ride, I'll, I'll hear a song that I've literally not heard since like 1998, and I still know 80% of the words. I'm like, what are you doing in there? <laughs> 